I think I actually I didn't mess up the microphone this time, so I believe that people are actually going to be able to hear me. Um, as opposed to last week's episode, where the first seven minutes was for naught. Oh shit, I forgot to change the title of the episode. Damn it. Damn, I can't find it now. What, my, my stream? No, the um, Polygon like tweeted out this thing. It was like a picture of like the front of like a Lego box and Jar Jar was like evil. Uh, what are we going to name this episode? This is episode 12, and it will be called... Oh, shit. And another thing, I the reason why I was, like, a little bit late is I stopped by, um, Target because they have Nuka-Cola again. You found some? Wait, wait, wait. This store was out, but she said if you call the one in Charlotte, because they have, like, 24 cases or whatever... She gave me a number to like just call them and say like these numbers and they'll like put one in the back for you. What the fuck? So if you want it, I can just give you this number. Oh man, it. we got a we got a follower already. Con what? Is that Confections <laughs> Celsi? Confections Else. Hey, thanks so much, man. Uh, we're actually gonna start the episode pretty soon here. Um, but yeah, thanks for the follow. We appreciate that. Yeah. Can I? Where do how do I get how do I get my chat? I forget how to get the chat open every time. We're 12 episodes in, and I still can't figure out how to do this on my phone. Here we go. You want to be a hero it's okay, he's a better DM than he is a quicker. Look at that. It's one of the three settings you can change. what it means to be a hero. Taking out monsters, making a name for yourself. In Dungeon Marsh, you can start up... Man, I got ads in ads right now. <laughs> they can take down a dragon. A dragon. You can take down a oh, dragon. Oh, the plus side, your audio is good. You. There was yeah. a lot like a of... Uh, news today for Super Smash Brothers. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah, it's been all over Reddit. Like, half of half of my Reddit front page is just people who will not shut the fuck up about Cloud. Yeah, so we got Cloud, which is already known, but there's a surprise. And it's Bayonetta. Bayonetta. Oh, man. I haven't wanted to play Super Smash Brothers so bad. How do I make ever. it so it's just chat? And not the video? Oh, here what? we go. Oh, Chat can, only. Are you in the dashboard? Chat only. Okay. Testing. Yeah, I don't think my computer can quite handle it. I'm gonna have to close the Twitch. But I'll still be in the chat. Yeah, I've just got roll 20. Woo! There we go. Crimson Beard. Crimson Beard. I like that name. I like that name a lot. CaptainRob.exe fail. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I think we have everybody here. Is Kevin here right now? Do we got him? Mm hmm. Hello? I've been known to be here. Oh, okay, good. Um, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and start us off. So, uh,. What's going on, everybody? Uh, thanks so much for hanging out, if you are in here. And uh, if you're not in here and you're watching the episode afterward, uh, thank you so much for tuning into us. We're really happy to see you. Uh, this is episode 12 of our Dungeons & Dragons campaign, of which I will be your dungeon master, your uh, beautiful host for the rest of the evening, or for however long we decide to play. My name is Captain Rob, also known as Robert Steinberg. I live here in Los Angeles, California. I am an aspiring actor and voice actor out here. And every week I convince these five idiots to join me in a channel where we pretend to be other people for about three or four hours. Um, these are all of my friends and compatriots. To the right of me, we have our buddy Chris, who is playing Cantharion our holy paladin. Underneath Chris, we have my good buddy Landon, who comes in playing Vincent, who is our gnome sorcerer. Underneath Landon, we have the beautiful Jillian, who is coming in and playing our holy cleric. To the left of Jillian, we have Kevin, who plays our half-elf rogue. And last but certainly not least, we have my good buddy Joe, who is Joe Covered Mountain, playing Venator, 
our elf uh, ranger. Did I get that all right? Did I get that all right? I still mm -hmm. I still stumble up when I get towards the tail end of that. But uh, how's everyone's week been? Everyone getting excited? Everyone getting excited for the holiday season? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I learned about this thing called an elf on a shelf that I had never seen before. Um, <laughs> apparently, two thousand thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, apparently you buy an elf, and then you have to hide it in your house. And, like, every day of December, you have to move where the elf is, and the, the elves just do weird shit, and the kids have to find it. You're the only one that doesn't know what that is. That, I've yeah. never, I had never heard of that before, until, like, this week. And to which I thought, that would be a nightmare. Like, it would make the entirety of December just, like, I have, I have yeah. an additional two extra hours We've that I have to... Time. I'm surprised that's not a movie yet. What, Elf you know, on a Shelf? When my mom was a kid, her mom would tell them all, she had um, six kids total, um, that they had this little hanging elf that it would watch them. And so what her little brother would do is just smack it every chance he got. That's like the beginning of a horror movie, when that when that elf decides to turn on your brother. That's what the movie yeah, should never, be. we never like, tried to make our kid think that he was being stalked by elves. <laughs> It would just be, and so I've heard that like they get more than one elf if you have more than one kid. So then, I, like if I had like three kids, I would have to plan out like every night for three hours where I'm gonna hide these fucking elves. I think some... it'd be better to do it with raptors. A with raptor, raptors. a raptor on a shelf. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That'd be way better. <laughs> um, just hide your nightstand when you wake up. You're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> My dad wanted to get a lawn gnome and put it in front of somebody's house and then every single day move it closer and closer and closer to that person's house. Oh, and if God. they threw it away, go through their trash and then pull it back out and then maybe paint like some angry eyebrows on it and put it on their front doorstep. <laughs> oh, you have to buy several in case they burned it. Um, there was my, my, my beautiful girlfriend. One. My beautiful girlfriend told me the story about how her and her college friends used to go and steal lawn gnomes out of people's yards. Uh, and one day they, her friend got out of the car to pick up a lawn gnome, but not realizing the lawn gnome was chained to their front lawn. So she ran full speed with this gnome as fast as she could until she got to the end of the chain and then just whipped and her feet just like went right out from under and she slammed on the ground. I had been drinking one night and I was, somebody was driving me home and I said to the person who was driving me like, stop this car. And they stopped the car and I jumped out of the car and I went to go tackle a snowman. Little did I know that it had been sunny all day, and the snowman had like slightly frozen, and then at night, it, or slightly melting, and then at night it froze. So when I went to go tackle it and destroy it, it was just three balls of ice. And I just, <laughs> it just drove my shoulder into it, and I think I knocked out the middle one, and the top one just fell on my back, and I'm just laying on this like ice ball, and I'm just like, oh. That sounds <laughs> awful. Um, all right, well, we got everybody here. Uh, we did our introduction. We we said hey to everybody to see how everybody's doing. Looks like we're actually picking up a couple of people inside the inside the viewers here or inside the chat. So we probably can get started with some D and D. Um, in case you guys haven't seen it, or in case you are brand new, which I don't know, I don't think anybody in here is brand new right now. But if you are and you've missed any previous episodes, you can check out my YouTube channel, which is directly underneath our little the bit that you're looking inside with all of our heads and shit. Uh, if you look down there, you can find my YouTube channel. We have every episode on there, starting from episode three. Because prior to that, I did not know how to record episodes. Um, so we didn't do it. Uh, but it's not important. Um, so, I think we need to do a quick recap of what happened last week before we get right back into it. So, uh, nose goes. Yeah, I'm never doing this. Just let you know. <laughs> Yeah, this is never gonna be my thing. I think uh, I think Jillian gets the honors this week of telling us of telling us what oh, happened I'm last week. I'm terrible at that, so no, don't. Joseph, oh, no. will you will you take the torch? <laughs> your your I take your silence as acceptance. Brayton will do it. Kevin, do you want to do the honors? Sorry, break up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going through a tunnel. <laughs> All right. We're in a cave. 
All right. Breaking so uh snow in the blizzard. That's what and why it's breaking up so badly. I think oh, yeah, that uh I think that the only one left to do that now is Chris. For this horse. All right. So, last episode we continued to not make friends. Uh we, <laughs> we <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, so we requested an audience with uh, the order, and we got in in a hold of a high brother Jade. We were looking for allies. We we had three different quests to take on. We we could only accept one of them, so we we're hoping we could send some allies and and aid one of the other directions. And uh, we we met with this high brother Jaden, and uh, we we knew that they wanted information about the the mysterious ring that we found off of that hellhound thing whatever it was. So uh, Vincent had been wearing the ring and convinced us that he could not take the ring off. So he decided that it would be pretty cool to pretend to trip and summon the thing uh, when he couldn't convince Brother Jaden that he, he couldn't take it off, uh, summoned the beast, proceeded to start devouring a guard, uh, and thankfully we were able to stop hostilities there. It didn't escalate further, but yet another bridge was burned. Uh, we then headed north with a dragonborn caravan led by Horus. Uh, apparently, they're from the Emerald Mountains. They seem pretty cool. Hey, we didn't we didn't piss them off yet. Pretty neat. Um, they got us part of the way. They started us on our journey, and we ended up in in in, in the in these mountains, going along a road where nobody really wanted to take the lead. So Cantharion, being the brave paladin that he is, struck out blindly like he always does and eventually lost the road. Uh, but, thankfully, he remembered to read a book before he left. <laughs> what was, what was the book called? How to Mountain. <laughs> and that, that amazing novel inspired him and helped... By J.R.R. Mountain. <laughs> J.R.R. Mountain. <laughs> the, the Church of Redemption, again, we want to make sure we get all demographics. Some people can't read good. Um, so yeah, we're we're headed headed into the Emerald Mountains. Um, we got a little lost. We lost our poor poor Grisham spent all this money on this really cool uh, like a carriage like a cart that we had to leave behind. Um, we found a bag of holding that was neat, and uh, now we're kind of going along a, a little mountain path um, in a cave kind of waiting out the a storm that we hope will clear up a little bit and we just heard some screams. I think Rob gave us the bag of holding because he took away the cart and felt bad. No, that bag that bag of holding was there the whole time. I was hoping you would go down, but I was hoping it wasn't going to be so easy for you to go down. But I did blow, like, three spell slots on our sorcerer, so that's pretty good. I, I consider that a win. Um, hey, I think you did a pretty good job, bud. Pretty good. So that was episode 11, and we're into episode 12 now. Uh, this is probably going to be the last episode of the year... Not considering the maybe special episode that we do when I go home. So I might hang out with Joe, and we might do a world-building episode where we just sit here and talk to you guys about the world that we're building and all that different kind of stuff, because I think it'd be kind of cool to have some of the viewers add some input if there's some things that they're interested in. Um, and also we might do another holiday-themed episode just like we did for Halloween, but for now, we get back to episode 12. So... Let me uh let me let me change the music a little bit here. Let me find something a little bit more. Let's use this right here. Here we go. All right. So the winds outside of the cavern are blowing heavily now. Uh, Grisham, who is still inside of his tent, can feel like you know the, the the heavy cold wind and snow you know wrapping at the at the side of the at the side of the tarp inside the cave you feel warm because you feel that the feel that warmth of the fire that cantharion has lit up uh the cave looks lived in like there was something inside here before uh i believe before whenever you were looking around you noticed that it was probably a pack of wolves that may have been living here um, but that there wasn't really any sign that they had been here recently. Um, inside the cave, you find that there was, uh, there's sort of a pile of, of bedding straw that's been, that's been constructed. Not, not in like a nice way, like, uh, like, like a human may have done it, but, but more like, you know, an, an, an animal probably was able to pull it off. Um, 
when you enter this cave, uh, prior to this, you you felt like you were being watched as you were as you were going on your journey across this uh, across this mountaintop. When all of a sudden you hear this uh, this blood curdling mixture of a of a screech and a yowl, and it, it's. It, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to describe what I what I have inside inside of my head, but it's like um, this is you not the right music that I want for this right now. This is far too this is far too happy. Um, force. I can't. I, there's no way I can imitate this. I can do the weird noise that I made for the other creatures, but there's no way I can imitate this. It's sort of like a like a like a dark. Um, I'm trying. To, have you ever played Have you ever played uh, Dead Space before? Has anyone played Dead Space before? Um, it's like that sort of scream that the ones that charge it you make. You know? Like a mixture of like an elephant with like a lion kind of thing. It's pre pretty scary. Um, you hear the scream come from outside of the cavern. On the other side. Not where you entered. Not, the, not this direction right here. But from the other direction. What do you do? Was I able to have enough time to work that blade out, or no? Um, go ahead. Uh, let's make a, let's make a roll for that. I want to see. You know, I figure you're pretty strong. Um, go ahead and do a strength roll because it's frozen in the sheath right now. Let's turn this music down just a little bit. Just to clarify, the scream comes from inside the cave or outside the cave? It's coming from outside of the cave, almost like at the mouth of the cave. So I'm camped in my tent right outside the mouth of the cave. You probably hear it. Okay, I just want to just want to make sure. Yeah. Um, a strength throw of 19, you're able to pull the, the sword from the sheath. Um, so you pull, you hear like the cracking sound of ice as your muscles and your muscles bulge and you just, just pull it out from the pull it out from the sheath there. Um, anybody else doing anything upon reaction? Oh, I sit up and unwrap myself from my furs, and grab my weapon, yeah, poke my poke my head out of of the uh, the front of the tent. Just my head, just my face. When you poke yeah. your head out from the tent, you see two large, uh, it's sort of like hooves, sort of like talons that are walking into the mouth of that cave. Uh, but you only see the hindquarters of this, of this thing. You don't see the front. And you see that it's making its way into the cave. How high is this ledge that I'm on? Um... I would say probably about know, like seven or eight feet, something like that. Seven or eight feet. Not too uh, high, like not too high that you wouldn't be able to jump down without without hurting yourself. You you probably, yeah. I mean, okay. it, it would be high for like you and I, but not for like a ranger. Like like you've probably jumped off things that are higher than that without without worrying. Okay, I make my way to the ledge, and I draw my bow. Okay. And not gonna roll. Anybody else? <clears throat> hey, so Is it coming from the other entrance? That's correct. Go ahead. Is it is it evening? Is it dark? I assume it's dark outside. It is dark. Yes. It's like early okay, evening, gonna... so it's so the sun is just going down. It's like you probably had another twenty minutes of light before it just became complete darkness. It's also kind of hard to see outside though, because the blizzard is becoming more and more intense as the night goes on. As it gets colder, it's becoming more intense. We haven't had any rest yet, right? So he doesn't have his spells back. You have not. Okay. Okay, Rob, I'd like to um take the first I, I mean I guess uh round um and I want to I want to pull the um the uh hooded lantern off of my backpack and I want to I want to light it up okay That's the first thing I want to do like still inside my tent but I want to I want to you know so you're doing this from inside the, the tent like the light the light yeah, wouldn't I'm, I'm permeate still in the tent. okay well it's a hooded lantern so I have the hood like almost closed you know to to, to keep the light dim. Okay, okay. 
Um, yeah, you can do that. That make that that makes complete okay. sense. Um, the creature doesn't appear to. So so from what from what you can see, uh, uh, Grisham, the 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 creature doesn't appear to be paying any sort of attention to you. It's sort of it, you, you, as you caught it, it was entering the cave. Um, at this time, I am going to do this. I'll put this right here. And let's go ahead and change that to the token layer. Huh. Um, this is not what the creature looks like. Uh, it's roughly the size that the creature is. Um, you see this thing walk into the walk into the, the the cave. It looks like a mixture between like a wolf and an elk. Um, it has these large, uh, it has these large, uh, antlers that are, that are, you know, attached to its head. And it's, it's, it's lips are sort of like pulled back on its, on its face. As if, it, it, it appears as if maybe it wasn't supposed to eat meat, but it's been doing it for a while. It's also sort of caked in like dry blood. Uh, tufts of hair are around its body, normally, you know, mostly around its mane, and then around its sort of like elbow joints. The two hind legs are sort of sort of curled back a little bit, like they bend inward, like um, like a like a chocobo does, I think. Uh, you know, like like a, like birds do. But the front legs are like normal legs, and they're longer. Uh, so it's so it's 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 sort of barrel chested, larger in the front than it is in the back. Um, this creature walks in, and it has this gaze upon it. And as it walks in, it gazes at you, Cantharion. Roll for initiative. I did. It was called stealth. Okay, you're, you're stealth. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give you stealth because it. Uh, I don't think it was really paying attention to you. At the time. Well, I'm still, you still want me to roll initiative for me. Yeah, go ahead and roll initiative. I gave you the first round so that way you could you could prepare you could ready your lantern. Oh uh, yeah. Wasted a crit on that initiative. Oh shit, yeah. I need to get a I need to get a pencil. <laughs> Real quick, I'll be right back. Glad I got that out of the way. Yup. Who needs and to go first anyway? I was gonna try to talk to it. I guess I can still do it. Yeah, I was gonna say that you should do that. Try to get it to talk. Yeah, because it's like doing something it doesn't want to do. Rob, I need a token on the map so I can roll. You need a token on the map. You do need a token on the map. Because I realize that I'm not actually I'm not actually inside yet, but we put you we put you back there. All right, so we got Venator. We got wow, you guys are not very good at initiative here. Let me roll for initiative <laughs> for this thing. Hey yo. I'm gonna go with uh, what am I? What did I name this? Bob. Uh, Bob's your uncle. I didn't name it. Oh, wait, I, it's gotta be an M name, right? So like, how about? It that? actually is an M name, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Because <laughs> because fuck you. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go with this. Uh, and then. Yeah, yeah we trust. Who am I missing? Venator, Grisham, Shadow, Vincent, Cantharion. Cantharion is here. Okay, Venator, you are first, bud. This thing, it looks like it's hungry. Like, it looks like it it plans to, uh... It doesn't look like talking to it's going, going, to, going to work. So I... Completely did not write down what sort of the stats for my longbow. Hmm. Um, it should be in the player's handbook. Do you want to hold your movement yeah. or hold your action for until you, until you can find it? Yeah, I'm gonna take a, a five foot step over here so I can get a better angle on it, and I'm gonna hold my action to attempt to uh, shoot it. So I'm going to just go ahead and draw my bow and keep it on the beast. Okay. Um, oh, wait, and then I'm going to use my bonus action to uh, to mark it. Okay. So he's marked? Yeah. Yes. I will uh, hunter's mark it. All right. 
and Hunter's Mark gives anybody who attacks a combat advantage, right? No, I think it's just me. Okay. Let me read real quick. Okay. Uh, skills. Um, while you're doing that, uh, the creature sort of like it, it's it's staring at, at Cantharion, and you can you can hear you can hear and see its breath. As it come, as it as it exhales, um, it's breathing very hot. Like this thing, like it was probably hunting for quite some time. Uh, and it, it it as it looks at you, it sort of digs its claws back into the ground and lowers its head, and it's going to charge at you. Uh, Cantharion, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. I'm not good at that. Well, oh, that's unfortunate for you. What about athletics? I'm nope. Really athletic, Dexterity so. is what you gotta do. <laughs> but right. with advantage, because he's in a fire. Nope. No advantage. Uh, it lowers its head, and these two antlers come out. As it charges at you, it knocks you in the chest, and you can feel that the antlers like shove themselves into your body. Uh, they don't go that deep, because you only take seven points of damage. But as you take those seven points of damage, you are immediately knocked back ten feet, and you are now prone. After charging you, it continues to walk forward, and it's going to do another attack against you. And this time it's going to get an attack with advantage. And let's do... Let's do gore. Alright, what's your, what's your uh, AC? 21. 21. That is going to hit. You are going to take 8 points of damage. So as it, uh, it knocks you back and knocks you prone, and then as you're on the ground, it begins to, like, you know, just sort of whip its head against your body, and it's sort of, like, driving these, uh, these antlers into your body. They're, like, they're razor sharp. Um... In such a way that, like, it's 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 bizarre to you. You've seen antelopes like fight in the wild, um, but this this looks different. Uh, well, clearly, first, it doesn't look like a fucking antelope. Uh, but the second thing is, it 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 looks like it's it's acting in such a way that 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 that, that this creature like probably shouldn't. Um, next up is Cantharion. Glowing red nose. It does not have a glowing red nose. No. That's tomorrow's episode, or next week's episode. <laughs> Alright, well I stand back up, I'll use my movement to stand, and then fight back with my glowing long sword. Oh boy. Damn, 27, that's a good roll. And because I hit, I want to do uh, make it a divine smite. <clears throat> Eighteen points of damage. That's not bad. You hit pretty good there. Um, so you like sort of raise this sword up in the air and like bring it down, and as it's like sort of moving its head to like get back into a position to hit you again you sort of catch it right in the uh in between the two antlers and it slashes across his eye um the thing takes this much damage let's go down to that next up is grisham who is stealthed by the way oh wait can i do i get a second i get a second attack can i do a second attack yeah Whatever you want. Sorry. I don't care. That's my, that's my B. I'm, I'm rusty on the combat. No, that's okay. That's why I started this one out with combat. This was going to be the end of the last session, but I was like, we took for fucking ever. Because somebody decided to summon a giant Ifrit beast. That is a crit. So that's going to do 11 points of damage. And one more divine smite. There you one go. Second level. Well, let me double check. Because I think I think it's only two d eight, so maybe I'll just roll one d eight for this one, and then it still adds up. Let me double check. What do you What do you do when you do the attack? Because I don't like I don't like describing your attacks. I want you guys to describe how you hit it. So like my sacred longsword is already glowing, right? And when I do a divine smite, 
it's like a beam emits, like a glow emits from my holy symbol onto my sword to like amplify it. So it's like Power it's almost glow. blind. I imagine you're like stabbing. Power glow. You're stabbing the sword into it, and then the the smite is like a bonus, like like it's like a fist coming out of it, and there's bam, like punching it in the face. So you get hit by the one, and then hit by the other. So it is three d eight, and since it's damage on a crit, do I get to double it? Um. Well, you rolled your crit damage on there. Crit. When you crit, you just roll your damage dice twice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, because Divine Smite's, like, part of the attack. Like, you can choose to use it, like, if you hit. So, like, you don't expend it. I don't think, I don't think your Divine Smite crits as well. Alright. I think, I think only your weapon damage is the part that crits. All the damages. So, is that, so is that 11 plus 17? Yeah. Okay, so that would be a total of 28. Damn, you did a shitload of damage this first time. I need to give this thing more health. Um, may I use my action now? Yes, you may. And then we'll go. And then we'll go over to uh, Grisham. Okay, I'm going to use my action to fire my longbow at it. Okay. It's going to be. Let's see if this works. No, that didn't work. All right, I'm going to roll it myself. So it's 1d20, or what, slash roll. 1d20 plus my dex mod, which is 3. So plus 3. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Uh, 14. 14. A 14 is going to miss. So I'm going to say that like as you fire off this arrow, it ducks in just in such a way that it you, you see the arrow fly across it and like cut some of the hairs on its back. But then the arrow like slams into the wall. It doesn't stick into the wall because the walls are made of like stone. But it like slams in the wall and sort of like flies off in the other direction. Okay, I get two attacks, so I'm going to see my terrible shot firing with this bow for the first time, and I'm going to try to adjust and fire off a second shot. Oh, there you go. And I completely mess it up. So Reaching after... an arrow, I fumble around with it and quickly throw it on the bow and just fire it off. And as, as you fire it off, like it, it like sort of like skids against the ground like a skipping rock across a pond, and then the thing just like steps on it as, like, as the arrow comes towards it. Nice. Uh... Do you want to move? Are you in any movement? Or did you move already? No, you moved beforehand. Uh, I, yeah, I moved already, so we're good. All right, uh, Grisham, you are up, bud. Right, Thanks so much, still Crimson still Beard. Still I appreciate stealth. the compliment right. on the beard. Sorry, go ahead. I'm still stealthed, or do you want me to roll it again? You are still, you are still okay. stealthed. All right, I'm going to move uh, to here, and I'm going to take that lit iron lantern and i'm gonna just whip it right across its face Damn. as hard as i can and try to smash the smash the oil and the fire all over it okay it is not immune to fire so you are so you're okay um are you gonna do this as your attack like your uh yeah that's my attack okay okay so you have combat advantage right now um so you right. can use this as a sneak attack if you want to do a sneak attack on it you have combat advantage anytime you are adjacent to an ally. All right. Or anytime um, you and an ally are adjacent to the same to the same enemy, I think. They what made would be the damage. Would it be D four like a like a dagger then? Uh yeah, or let's just do less? that. Yeah, it that seems it seems like a cool thing that you're doing there. So yeah, let's do that. Okay. Oh crap, I rolled twice, I think. Is it lag? Take the first one. <laughs> I I have not seen a roll yet. Uh, it was eight to hit, so I missed. Oh, you said I have advantage, so it's nineteen to hit. A nineteen to hit? I have I yeah, I don't see a roll. Oh Jesus Christ! All right, yeah, I just saw it. You just like exploded all over my screen. Um, you had advantage, so it's nineteen to hit. So you do hit. 
Uh, yeah, so it'd be 22 damage. 22 damage? And I, and I don't know if you'd say that it was on fire or not. That'd be up to you. I'm going to say it's on fire. I'm going to do like an additional... So it's trying to smash the lantern, you know, like smash the, the oil and the, and the fire on it. I rolled, a, I rolled an additional D4 for fire damage. I rolled a 4, so we're going to add a 4 to that. So you did 26 points of damage. Is that correct? Am I doing that math right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, my, my main uh, is it on fire though? Like, did I actually ignite it, or is it? Let's see. High or low? Low. All right, you lit it on fire. Um, let's see. Always go low. I know how I roll. <laughs> always go. Always, always be lowing. Um, let's see here. I gotta do. I gotta do this math now. Fuck. Uh, that is at this. Okay, and it is on fire. Um, okay, do you want to do anything else after that? That's a shitload of damage. You guys do a lot of damage not, now. Not not get eaten by it. Okay, well, I can't guarantee that that's going to happen. Oh, that's it. All right, so next up is Shadow. Vincent, I think we need to work together on this. Um, I want to try to tame the beast. If you can... Um, get it to communicate with us, then I can command it. Maybe you can convince it convince it that I can create food for it so it won't try to eat us. Yeah, it's my specialty. <laughs> um, how would we, we do that? Because I'm before him. Um, we could say that Vincent can go before you if you want to do that. She can, like, hold yeah, like, you can, like, you can hold your action and Vincent can go first. And then you can do yeah, yours as a reaction. He is. He's right after yeah, you. Yeah, um, I had to move forward, though, because he's line of sight. That's okay. You can move forward, hold your action, and say, I'm going to do this in reaction to Vincent doing this. Okay. And then when Vincent does that, then you do it immediately afterward. All right. We're metagaming a little bit, but whatever. It'll work. It's supposed to be fun. I mean, you think it'll work. You can try. So is it my turn? Yeah, it is. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to move up, Which and... One? Yeah, I'm going to put tongues on it so it will understand the language of my choosing, choosing and that will be... Uh, we'll do Canadian. It understands Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> So, so the beast now understands Canadian. Yeah, is that is that Canadian common or Canadian French common? Yeah, or Canadian Canadian, Canadian under common. We'll have to go with common. I don't know French common. Tame beast, be still. And you're using and you're using command on it. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. Do 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 do. Target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. All right, let's see here. And it is on fire. That would probably be some kind of modifier. Mm. Might not like being a wisdom on fire. saving throw or follow the command on its next turn. The spell has no effect if the target is undead. If it doesn't understand your language or if the command is directly harmful to it, subject is commanded for one round. Okay. Okay. So if I follow the rules, I have to do this. All right, I failed. Um, so the creature does not respond, uh, but it does sort of like sit still and look in your direction. Um, it is on fire still. Uh, and it is going to be Venator's turn if you guys didn't want to do anything else after that. Well, were we still going to try to talk to it? Just that we've kept it still, it would be Vincent's turn when it... Yeah, can we, can we speak to action? it at all, like, convo? I'm, I wouldn't say... You can't have a conversation. Because it because in the nature of combat, it's supposed to be, like, seconds. So you might be able to say, like, one thing. Uh, technically, when you use the, the spell command, you're only allowed to say one word, and it has to do the word, as long as it's not okay. something that harms it. Like, you can't be, well, like... tame. Yeah, you just said tame, oh. or like halt, and like when you when you said halt or tame, it stopped. Like it, it stood still. 
Okay. Yeah, fair enough. I don't want to like. I don't want to shoot it or anything. So actually, that's my whole turn. Yeah, because if anyone so. hits it, then it's gonna break my command on it. Right. Um. Well, the way the command works is it has to listen to your command for an entire turn. And then after that turn, it can do whatever it wants. Which is like eight seconds. Yeah. So you have eight seconds of whatever you want until it no longer has to listen to you. Okay. So it can't attack anybody else then? It that technically is tamed right now. It says it, the, it says doesn't move and takes no actions. That's correct. Okay. So, Venator, you are up. Uh, I reach into the back and I pull out another arrow and I look over at these guys. I'm like, the last time you tried to tame a beast, it did not go so well. So we're going to put this thing down and I fire an arrow at it. Okay. And we're going to do... Whoops. Uh, 13. Uh, you miss... So, no. so you 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 say your you say your 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 piece, and then fling back the arrow, and you fire it. And as it as it you fire it at it, the the thing turns its head and looks at you, and it just flies right past it, um, and doing nothing. Damn ranged weapons, and I knocked another arrow, and I released <laughs> that as well. Um, so it's gonna be the creature's turn. I cannot do anything because I'm tamed right now, but I am on fire. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna. S I guess that's gonna go ahead and do damage. Um, that's gonna do four damage. Uh, and I believe taking damage is going to take it out of it, but I would take the damage at the end of the turn. No, I would take the damage at the beginning of the turn. So that's gonna break me out of it. So, um, the, the, the creature, uh, it sort of looks towards, looks towards Venator, and then as the arrow flies past it, it, you know, it feels the burn against, against its fur, and sort of realizes that, that, that it's, that it's still on fire. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use one action to try and shake that off, and I am. So it sort of, like, shakes its body and is able to extinguish the flames, uh, that, that are against it. Um, and then... I'm going to use my other action to go ahead and do an attack against Grisham. So let's go ahead and do... What do I want to do? Um, I don't get any choice in this. Uh, I mean, you can try and dodge it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do... Uh, all right. So it rears up and it, and it attempts to like kick you with its, uh, with its front sort of talon, talon paw thing. Uh, that is going to probably miss you. Seven? Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, that's going to miss you. So it, so it sort of like, it sort of like pushes forward and, it, and it's not able to hit you at all. Um, and it's going to be, uh, Cantharion's turn. I shall strike it down. Fourteen is going to miss. I shall try again. <laughs> it's been a long time since we've done combat. We do a lot of we do a lot of role play, not a lot of combat. Twenty nine. That's gonna crit. So you do eleven points of damage plus three additional damage, and a lesser divine smite. A lesser divine smite. That is going to be six additional damage. So that's going to be four, two, six. So that's going to be twenty points of damage right there. So that's going to take it down to this. Um, Grisham, you are up. Crimson Beard says, "I need to read a book." Um, I'm just gonna. Uh, do I have to use a round to draw my weapon? Is that the lantern? Um, nah. I'll give it to you as a free action to draw it. All right, because I'm gonna—I'll draw an attack then. 
Um, I'll do another um, sneak attack because I still have advantage. So I find the stupid page on the thing. The page on the thing, you know. <laughs> English is good. Probably a miss. That is going to miss on that. A 12? Wait, no, you have advantage, don't you? Because you're next to... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. you're next to Cantharion, so that's going to hit. So, yeah, unfortunately, like you damage. you did, like, you, like, crit, miss your, like, damage or whatever. So you only get to do 10 points of damage there. Um, but you did, in fact, hit it. And it's going to be Shadow's turn. Damn, I had to miss a whole fucking turn there. <laughs> Dems the bridge. Okay, I'm, I'm going to cast my spiritual weapon. Oh, hold on, let me do the spell info one. And um, create my floating weapon beside it. Okay. And have it attack him. Ooh. Can I draw on there? Uh, you might be able to draw on there. If you can't draw on there, I can draw on there. There you go. Hey. There's a <laughs> there sword. There you go. Is your spiritual weapon a sword? Well, no, it's like a spear, but... Here. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do, pick. That'll do. <laughs> hey. So it does. Uh, really. your spiritual weapon does one d eight plus your spell casting ability modifier. Yeah, and the damage for seven force that I rolled. Yep. So I was gonna do seven points of damage there. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna poke it with the pointy end. You did. You did. You uh, you poke it with the pointy end as the, the, this sort of like spectral like sword appears, or it's like the spear appears uh, in space. And as I imagine, like as it appears, it drives forward into this into this creature. It sort of like rears back and makes that hideous sound as you're doing it. Um, as it does that, you see that the veins inside of this creature suddenly start to like glow, like a like a like a translucent blue um for a second it like it it, it as it, and it pulsates almost like the heart is pumping uh this blood through its body and it you see like that sort of like spectral blue um like veins going throughout it um if is, is that the end of your turn right there Shadow? Oh, sorry. Yes, I was trying to look that up for Landon. Yes, that was the end of my turn. Okay. As these, as the veins begin to glow blue, you see, like, the the places where you've injured this creature slowly sort of, like, they, like, ice over. Um, almost like they're, 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 like, freezing over the wounds. Um, next up is Vincent. Okay. Um, have we got an update on how it was looking? How the, the beast was looking? It was looking Pretty bad annoying. before. Now it doesn't look like it's doing that bad anymore. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do my last third level spell. And it's gonna be Fireball. But I'm gonna shoot it in the, like, towards the back end of it, so I'm not gonna hit any of our melee damage dealers. Okay, so you wanna, you wanna put it, like, back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like this that. should be good. I, I think you can probably do it. What's the radius on it? It's 20. 20? 20 feet. Yeah, so like... You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's right there, but... <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. There's a good one. All right, I'll give, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Why, why the fuck point, not? Point blank. I, I can soak it. The, uh, I, imagine, I imagine, like, you're throwing it, and as you throw it, everyone sees. They're like, you missed it by a mile. And then when it hits the ground, it explodes, and you're like, Jesus Christ. All right, and it, it is 8d6 on a failed reflex save. Yes, yeah, right. so you have to look at what your uh, spell save DC is on the spell page. It's 14. That is a 14 against... It's a reflex save. Uh, Where do I find that on here? Because I have strength, dexterity, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. 
And saving to Oh yeah, never mind. I'm an idiot. Uh what did you say it was? Mine was fourteen. Fourteen? I failed. Okay, so it's full damage. Okay. This thing's eight. Alright, so eight D six. Eight D six. Start him up, someone. <laughs> That's decent. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. I'll give it to you. Um, that takes it down to this. So this um, fireball sort of like like is hurled over its head. You like shoot the J, and uh, it goes over its head, landing and landing in the back, and then just explodes, and all this fire is sort of like you know covering its back, and you like like ash from the ground and shit that comes flying up and you feel like the, the heat of the air and the ash as it flies past you. Um, then it's going to be Venator's turn if there's nothing else that you want to do. Is it for me? Is it for you? Venator, you are up, bud. Okay, I'm going to say screw the bow and I'm going to put the bow back in the, the same action, pull out my sword and shield. And then I'm going to... That's impressive dexterity, to, like, put it away and pull the other ones out at the same time. Some fucking Bro. video game shit right there. Bro, full elf. <laughs> Full-blown right, elf. And then I'm going to... What's my movement? I think it's, like... 35? Okay, so I'm going to jump down this cliff. And then move up here and make a strike against it. Nice. With my... With my short sword, because I get my long sword to Cantherion. Let me see here. So short sword plus Hunter's Mark plus Colossus Slayer. Oh, so that's damage. Womp womp. Womp womp. That's what we're looking for. 20 versus AC. 20 is going to hit. Okay, now we'll do damage. <laughs> its name is Fuck You. <laughs> uh, it's going to be 21 damage. 21 damage. That's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, and then I get a second attack. So I'm going to, as I jump down, I kind of like slash down with the Colossus Slayer, and then I'm going to bring the sword back up and try and slash again at that open wound I just made. Oh, okay. Going deeper. So we're going to go short yeah. sword attack. Ugh. That is going to miss, unfortunately. Critical fail. So as you, as you, you know, you do the first attack, which sort, sort of cuts it pretty deep, the second attack, it sort of rears back and moves out of the direction, and the your sword just sort of hits onto the ground. Um... Now it is my turn. So as a free action, it is going to disengage to sort of like move backward in that direction. I need, I need Cantharion, I need uh, Venator, and I need Grisham to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Cantharion, you fail, but Grisham and Venator both succeed. Um, so, the You got a zero? <laughs> I have minus one, all right? Damn. Um, <laughs> it charges forward and is able to sort of like buck its head. It misses, uh, it misses Venator and Grisham, but it is able to hit Cantharion. Cantharion, you take... Eight points of damage, and you are back here and knocked prone once again. Um, now it's going to go ahead and do its attacks. So let's go ahead and gore uh, Grisham. Oh, I cannot roll with this die at all. Uh, that is going to be a ten to hit. That's a miss. Fifteen eight. That is a miss. Uh, and then it is going to attempt to kick uh, Venator. That is going to be a 16 to hit. Oh, uh, no, I have a 17. There's a 17, so that is going to miss. Motherfucker. I need to start lying or rolling better. Um, 
26 versus AC. Fuck y'all. Okay, let me try and do one more thing. All right, sweet. Okay, here's what's going to happen. After it attacks you, it lowers its head, and you can feel this sort of cold coming in around you. Um, everyone with 180 degrees, which is everybody, needs to go ahead and uh, make a constitution saving throw for me. You said everybody does? Everybody needs to make a constitution saving throw. Ooh. Vincent, you fail. Grisham, you succeed. Shadow, you succeed. And did I miss anybody else? Yeah, yeah nope. the top. Oh, oh yeah, uh, Cantharion succeeds. Vincent, you are blind and deaf right now. Um, <laughs> it's sort of like you 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 see like this like the blizzard like enter from the cave, and you almost feel like the I mean it. it it's almost like the creature is controlling the blizzard. It's hard for you to tell whether or not this came from the creature or this just came from the, the, the hostile environment from the outside. But as the wind blows inside, you feel this intense cold. And you can't hear, you can't hear anything but the wind and see anything in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Vincent, you are blind and deaf right now. And you need to make a DC 10 saving throw in order to uh, get out of it. Yeah. On your turn. Um, next up is going to be Cantharion. Well, I stand up, and then as my action, I'll move over. <laughs> and my bonus action, I will cast Compelled Duel. So he's going to make a wisdom save. Or he has disadvantage on attacking anyone but me. Okay. And he can't get away, etc., etc. On this save, it's also a DC fourteen. Okay. Um. I save out of that. This is the first time I actually rolled good. Roll that a seventeen. Could, yeah. And that's my turn. Did what you could. Next up is Grisham. Um, I'm going to use cunning action to hide. And uh, so, should I re roll that? Um, I'm going to say no. You can probably. Yeah. Yeah, you succeed. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to move. Uh, around if I can can I move there um yeah I think you could probably move there by way of like this direction well I want to I want to I want to end my turn there but as I'm like passing I want to I want to slice like do my attack like try to get the like hamstring the beast or get the you know the leg I imagine try, like you you like slid it. underneath it that works too. Yeah, that, that seems, cool. that seems yeah, like we'll that, that seems like fucking cool. Just like the table that never happened in the real world. <laughs> the table. But the the table. table. Where's my where's my ball bearings? <laughs> <laughs> that we have is ice, right. What recipe recipe for disaster? Yeah. Um. Let's Do I have advantage on this attack? Um, okay. I would say yes, because there are two other people in front of it. So there are, you have allies adjacent to the enemy. So you have advantage when you have allies right. adjacent to the enemy. Ooh. Jesus fucking Christ. And you crit. That is going to do Jeez. 27 points of damage. Motherfucker, I'm just getting my ass kicked right now. That'll go down to this, and that'll go down to this. All right, there we go. Next up is Shadow. Cantharian, are you injured? I mean, I've been better, but <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> Meanwhile, Vincent's like, what? Venice, <laughs> are you healing? Nope. 
Haven't Grish, even been touched. Grisham? Busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if they're all right, then I'll tend to... Do I have anything that would remove status effects from... No? I don't think so. No. Um, well, my weapon's still going to do some damage at him. Okay. And I guess I'll just stay back here until anyone needs me. Let's go ahead and do... Let's take that out of this right here. Alright. Um, next up is going to be Vincent. Vincent, you are blind and deaf right now. Alright, I'm going to write a book real fast. <laughs> from my experience. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, so... How do you do... What were you saying I have to do a throw? So, um, so you, ca you cannot... Um, you have, you have, like, disadvantage on all attacks right now. Um, you can't hear anything. You cannot see anything. And the only way to get out of it is at the end of your turn, you have to do a constitution saving throw. Okay. Yeah, I'll do the, I'll just end my turn with the throw. Okay. And... So you're, like, spending this time trying to get your, get your bearings yeah, back. Yeah, my, my mojo back. And you yeah. are, like, you hear, you hear, like, a ringing in your ears, but then all of a sudden shit starts to come back, and you hear, like, people fucking screaming and shit, and this giant thing there. And you're, like, able to, like, wipe the, wipe the snow and shit from your eyes, and you're able to see again, so. You're good. Uh, Venator, you are up. Uh, just looking to see about favorite enemies. Okay. Uh, yep. So I am going to take my short sword and then try and thrust it into the beast. Okay. Which will be an eight. You are going to try and fail. All right. So after that thrust and that miss, I'm going to spin the sword around and then come across like over the top of my head. Again, trying to slash down at the animal. All right. Short sword. Bam. Bam. Beast. That it is, is very miss. elusive. Yes, very, very elusive. And it uh, it recognizes that you are attacking it and is going to go ahead and respond as well. So as you, like, drive your sword forward and then back up and down, it rears its head back and tries to slam you with, uh, with that, you know, pointy bit on top of its head. We would call those antlers... Um, that is going to be a 18 versus AC. That hits. That hits. So you are going to take... Nice. You call them antlers. Cantherian calls them razor horns. You're going to take 12 points of damage. <laughs> and the next thing is... once So, so uh, Grisham slid underneath it and sort of got it in the back in, in its hamstring. In response, it takes the free leg and is going to attempt to kick at, uh, at, at, um, at Grisham there. That is going to be a 17 versus AC. There goes my face. Okay. So, that is going to do this much damage. When good ideas go bad. 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Um, and you need to make a strength saving throw for me, please. You have failed that saving throw, so that means that you are thrown back 10 feet and knocked prone. Um, so you are prone in the back of that case. It, like, it, it kicks you and you sort of like fly across the or the How room much and slam down. 14 you said? 14 points of damage. Right. Um next up is going to be uh how do I want to do this? I want to move this guy, I think. So I'm going to move him over here. There you. Go. Yeah. So it sort of like runs after after it gores you it's and kicks and kicks uh, Grisham. It sort of runs past you to get up on that ledge. Uh, so now it has the high ground. Um, I'm going to say it is Cantharion's turn. All right, I'll try to get up there. Do I just do it? 
Yeah, they're, they're like they're like steps. It's probably not difficult to get up oh, there. Oh, okay, sweet. And I'll take more swings. Twenty-three is going to hit. And I got, I got more divine smites. We'll do another lesser divine smite. Oh boy. It's gonna be 14 points of damage there. And that's gonna go down to this number right here. All right. That's a good question, Rob. Do I get an attack of opportunity because it ran past me? Oh, yeah, you do. Point? Yeah, you do. Do it. Do it. Cool. Go ahead and, go ahead and give it a roll. Where's the my chat catching those rules? Well, yeah, right. there you go. <laughs> Got a couple of guys who read the rule book here. That's gonna miss. <laughs> That's why I ignored it. Crazy priest. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You like you were like you stabbed with this antler and you're like fucking Jesus and like swinging your sword around unable to hit it. Um, I got one more swing in me. You got one more swing in you. That is going to miss. That is a crit miss, in fact. Yeah, crit miss. Yeah. <laughs> See what I did there? It's the holiday so season. <laughs> so your first attack, crit miss, and then crit hit in yep. roll. I got like so excited that I hit it with the first one, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm like showing off a little bit. I'm just like flexing a little bit, and I'm just like, no look, I'm, like trying to stab it, and I'm like, oh, it's it's over here. And I stabbed over there. He's like trying to strong arm it down, and it didn't happen. Um, next up is going to be Grisham, who is at this time prone. All right, so I can get up this turn and move. Yep. And that's about it. All right, I'm going to get up, and I'm going to attempt to stealth sneak again. Okay. Yep, you got it. Damn, that is one hell of a stealth roll. Can I... Um, Grisham is on fire move? right now. Can I, I mean, not like literally, but like... Or am I just taking my turn to get up, basically? Uh, you can do you can do another movement action, if you don't do an attack. Grisham cannot roll bad today. I don't know what is going on. <laughs> I failed that save. That was bad. Yeah, you did. I have, I finally was able to hit you one time. I'm hiding. I'm hiding behind Benatar. All right. <laughs> Um, next up stealth, is then. Shadow. Since he's stealthed, I wouldn't be able to heal him, right? Uh, you can. But what does your heals we look like? To... Um, it's the, the mass heal that would hit, go to three targets. Um, I think they have to be within sight. I mean, you can see him. So stealth yeah, doesn't, so stealth doesn't mean him. he's invisible. This isn't like World of Warcraft. It just means, like, he's sneaking in such a way that the creature would not be paying attention to him. Okay, well, Wouldn't I... you just roll a perception check against my stealth roll? Yeah, I guess you, yeah, I guess you could, yeah. If you were paying okay. attention to him. I'll see if, I'll, if I notice that he went into stealth. Where is he? You do Where not see him. him. <laughs> I'm going to say, like, like, line of sight, like, he was on the other side of the wall, so you're like, oh, well, he's probably okay. Yeah, I painted yeah. camouflage on myself to look exactly like Venator's back. <laughs> I can't see him right in front of me. Um, so I gotta heal the other two then, and not him. Ooh, and that's a that's a that's a crit miss heal there. But you do get five wow. points five Very points of heal there. So that's not bad. Very crit miss. Now, um, for my. Weapon, that... how how far would it be able to move? Um, it's probably on your it's probably on the spell how far it can move. I don't think it's that far. I think it's, it's, pro I think it's probably like twenty feet or something like that. But we you have, have to check on the spell. Uh, oh I just passed it. Well it says you call out words, so I would assume yeah, it it's like any, any ally in, in hearing range. Yeah, as a bonus action on your turn, you can move the weapon up to 20 feet and repeat the attack against the creature within 5 feet of it. 
Well, I think that would work, because let's see, that is 20 feet, and it's in 5 feet of it. Yeah, so you can uh, move, it so I can move it. It's technically 8 feet above. Well, I don't know, is that, is that part, is that it's square? It's floating. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. So, and... I guess it would reach. I'll say for oh, the yeah. for, for like the sake of coolness. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's it. Oh, you fuck it, let's do it. Pokes it from beneath the ledge like okay, this. Okay, let me. Sort of like soars in from underneath get back and to then. The right spell page. Bra. I need to have like these two spells on hotkeys or something. You can put them under under your weapons. It's just an additional weapon. You can totally do that. You can do a lot of things in roll twenty. I'll make Kevin do it. Negative. Twelve points Negative of damage. Right. Nice. Having this That's gonna be down to this hard. right here. You are hitting it pretty hard. Um. Next up is Vincent. If you're not actually gonna move your your person. I'm not moving me yet. I'm at a good distance from everyone. Sweet. Then that is going to be Vincent. All right. What's uh? Like the area around him, like maybe like above. What's it looking like? Uh, well, you're in a cave, so everything in in this. I mean, there's like a there's like a low hanging ceiling. Like so look above you fall. as to where your where the roof is to, on your house, and that's probably like where the top of the cave would be. Okay. Like a gnome roof or a human roof? Yeah. Like a human roof. Oh, okay. And he's, and he's looking pretty grim. So, so you're like, oh, this place is pretty spacious. But everybody else is like, eh, this place is all right. <laughs> he's, uh, I mean, he's he's hurting a little bit. Uh, we'll do a lame turn and just uh, just firebolt him. Okay. Don't want to make any movements yet. And it's just 1d10. So... I don't have, like roll to hit on this or anything, right? It's like a cantrip thing. Um, a cantrip you can use whenever you want to, but you do have to roll. You roll and you add your spell attack modifier to it. Okay. Which is probably your wisdom modifier or your charisma modifier or something like that. Oops. It's like a reverse vegan. Yeah. Twenty-two. That is going to hit. All right, and. We'll do this. Five points of damage. There you go. I mean, every little bit counts, right? Yeah. Just chunks. All right. So you sort of like flick out this bolt, and it like hits it in the in the chest, and it doesn't appear to really like move or be like be phased by it at all. You're like, you know, I, de I you definitely know you hit it, but you're like, eh, it just didn't didn't appear to to take a whole lot of take a whole lot of hurt from it. Uh, Venator. Bit, by the way, I'm gonna move up a bit. You're gonna move up a bit. Yeah, just get a little closer. Yeah, you are. Okay, I'm gonna move uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then as I climb up onto this ledge, I'm going to bring my sword up. Okay. Hey, we got another follower, Richard McSundy. Thank you so much for giving us a follow, man. We greatly appreciate it. Happy hunting. You, uh, you ran across the room. And now you're climbing yeah. up that you're climbing up that cliff. I'm gonna climb up the ledge, and then as I like get up onto the ledge, I'm gonna use my inertia to like as I boost up to also slash it up its underbelly. Oh, so you're like you're like you're gonna straight up like you know He-Man like pull yourself up there. You've been working you've been working this move out in the gym. And, uh, Unfortunately, you haven't been just, working out in the gym quite enough. Just completely get off balance and then just miss. And then as I I'm skipping leg, yeah, as I as I <laughs> like recorrect myself, I then bring the sword back over there across the top of my head to come across the top of its back. I feel like you initially were like, "Oh, this is gonna be cool," and then you missed, and you're like, "Oh, fuck it." I never, I never actually <laughs> regain my balance, and I just bring the sword down and continue to kind of wobble back and forth as I now am atop the cliff, trying to not fall down it. Yeah, that's I'm awesome. Staring up at this beast. That's awesome because now, uh, let me go ahead and make a roll. I recharged. Yes. Okay, everybody, make a uh, uh, a Constitution saving throw for me, please. Huh. My Constitution is just 
frazzled. Uh, unfortunately, you did save. Shadow did not. Grisham did not. Vincent did not. And... Cantharion did. Okay. Shadow, Grisham, and Vincent, you are all blind and deaf as the, as the wind begins to take inside of this room again. Um, and I am going to go ahead and... How far away is everybody? You, this probably this probably misses Grisham. This probably misses Grisham. Yeah, you are in range. Okay, this is going to hit Cantharion, Venator, um, Vincent, and Shadow. I need all of you to make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. Sweet. Oh no! You only do, you only have disadvantage if you're blind and deaf. Uh, well, I'm blind and deaf. So, so the per so Cantharion and and Venator, you do not take disadvantage to it. Did you do get a, you rolled a zero? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's up, what Ta Takai Kuro? I think I feel like I'm I feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong. Thank you so much for the follow. We appreciate it. Um. Vincent, you, f you oh oh shit, you have disadvantage. So Vincent fails, Venator passes, Cantharion Ooh. fails, Shadow fails, Grisham didn't have to roll. Uh, so who did I say didn't fail? Uh, I did not. It was Venator who didn't fail. So Venator, you are okay. Um, let me go ahead and get this moving here. So I am gonna move this guy all the way over here. Shadow, you're gonna get knocked get... back to there. You're gonna get knocked back get, like, to there. Attacks of opportunity or no? No, not on this. Because you're getting knocked back as you get hit. Well, I'm not. You're not. So do I get an attack of opportunity? Yeah, you get an attack of opportunity. Whatever, fuck yes. it. <laughs> as you're like, as you're like wobbling, like about to fall off this cliff. I'm wobbling, all of a sudden, like my con is like, oh god, and then I see it about to do something. I'm like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Sixteen is going to hit. All right. Do we do we think do we get Hunter's Mark on an attack of opportunity? Um. I look up Hunter's Mark and see what yeah, it's like. I think Hunter's Mark is isn't it concentration? So you've always had it unless you get hit. Oh, I was just wondering if it. And was you can the same you can like change it from one target to the next as a free action. So I don't think you ever lose it. Okay. I think I you only I think you only lose it if you get hit. Then you have to put it on something again. Okay. So, 5, 9, 11 damage. Alright. 11 points of damage. Alright, it is going to go down to this number right here. Um, okay, this will be fun. Alright, everybody who got hit and knocked back, you take... Eight points of damage, and you are all knocked prone. Um, then it is going to... Who hit it the hardest? Who hit it the hardest before? Grisham's hit it pretty fucking hard, but he's standing up. I've hit it 12, 8, and 8. Yeah, that's not that hard. You threw a fireball like at it. 40. I'm going to move over like here. Thing. And I'm going to gore... Uh, I'm gonna gore Vincent. It's going after the squishy mage. Yep. <laughs> um, that is going to be a nine. All right, solid one. Wait, so what? What is your AC? Uh, ten. Oh, so it misses you. A nine versus uh, AC, ooh. it barely misses you. And I didn't even lie. I rolled a five. Um, nice. so it barely misses you. Uh. Okay, and it is Cantharion's turn. Cantharion, you are blind and deaf and knocked prone. Wait, so no, you're not blind and deaf. The first one, yeah, 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 I'm just knocked down. Right? Yeah, you're just knocked down. But I'll get up again. Wait, because you're you're never gonna keep me down. <laughs> oh, <I see. laughs> so I get up and. 30, right? 30 feet. 30 feet. Is that your movement? 
You can probably get there. Let's say you can get there. And I'll do, um... Yeah, I'll do my last, uh, Compelled Duel. My last spell slot and try it one more time. So it's just the, it's that same Wisdom saving throw, uh, DC 14. Okay. I fail. So if you want to attack someone else, it's disadvantage. Okay. And then if uh, it wants to move away, it has to make another wisdom saving throw to try to move away. Okay. You might have su just successfully saved Vincent's life. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Grisham. Grisham, you are blind and deaf. But not prone. Um, what is the... Uh... What's the save? Uh, it is a, to be unblind? It is a, a constitution oh. saving throw. Ten or higher? Ten or higher. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so yeah, like no. this this intense cold, you're like covering your face and like reaching for your lantern somewhere probably. Um, I like stumble that way and kind of put my hand on the wall. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you a free movement towards the wall. Uh, next up is Shadow. I'm gonna stand up and stumble around a little bit and try to see. You are going to succeed with a 10. I can see. There you go. It's a mirror. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and... Can I cast also to... No, that, so you, you did a saving throw at the end of your turn. Okay, all right. Yeah. So that is done. Yep. Um, next up is Vincent. You are also blind and deaf. And you are prone. Again. Blind and deaf and you're laying on the ground. I mean, you're always kind of prone. Yeah. Oh, could I have moved my weapon or would I have... Would have that been part nah, of you, had to, you, you would have had to have sight to know where to move it. Okay. Yeah. You basically you lost like all your senses except your sense to feel pain. Um, Why can't my my pole arm see? Why can't it see? That shit don't have eyes. <laughs> um, it's going to be Vincent, blind, deaf, and on the ground. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna just sit there and meditate real hard and try to. <laughs> I'm trying to summon it. I'm trying to do it. Oh, you're gonna su you're gonna summon the beast. Oh. Yeah, I don't. Oh, why? I don't need my eyes. Oh no, no, I think we're okay. Cause it hasn't been that long since you last tried, right? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a while. Oh, that's right. You tried and you failed outside of the wall. Yeah, it was like way out in yeah. the cold, and it was like. Mm. It okay. wasn't that long ago. I don't know. Okay, let me go ahead and. High or low? Low. You fail. So as you try and summon it, I rolled an 18. It's if you're Rainson, you go low. Anybody else? I was like trying to channel Ludicrous. <laughs> I was like, that's got to be low. All right, fine. As you as you sort of like try and summon it, uh, you feel that there's you feel that same cold, lifeless, like there, like there's nothing there. Perfect. Going as planned. Yep. I can't do the throw or anything, right? No, like. Yo, you can do you can do, do, you can do the saving throw. Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna do that in my turn. Can you stand up? You are still blind, and still deaf. I'm gonna say hey. you can probably stand up because you can feel the ground, so you can probably stand up. Yeah. Sweet. Everything went according. Nice. Nice. So, um, it is going to be Venator's turn. Who is not blind, not deaf, and not prone? No. Ooh. Are you blind? Passing my saving throws at least. Did you did did you get blinded? No. No, you didn't. Yeah. No, Passed all my fine. stuff. You are good. Um, I see the tiny man kind of do a little fist pump in the air and then like kind of stagger up, and I'm like, all right, gotta get over there. So I leap off of the off of the ledge and use that kind of speed to run at the beast and. Try and stab it with my momentum. Okay. Eighteen's going to hit. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. Damage. Bam. 
16 damage. 16 damage, not too shabby. And then I get two attacks, so then with my second attack, I pull my sword out and then kind of spin it around and bring it down. Bring it down the hammer. Uh, and that's gonna hit. Sweet. So now we're gonna do that plus Hunter's Mark. So, uh, 12 did more damage. 12 more damage. That's gonna take you to this right here. We got so many people liking my tweet because it says, Hey, I'm Mr. Meeseeks, look at me. <laughs> um, all right, we are at, uh, no, I'm not gonna tell you how much health it has. Um, it is going to be the creature's turn. Man, all three of you are here. But I am compelled to duel Cantharion. So I think I'm going to duel Cantharion. Um, actually, let me see if I recharge. I don't. Uh, and then let's go ahead and do a gore against Cantharion. That is going to be a 10. No. That is going to miss. How about a 19? No. Nope. Ah, oh, man. Two attacks, and I miss you. I miss you, too. <laughs> what do I want to do, do here? What do I want to do here? I will leave, leave, leave myself where I am and say Cantharion's turn. I'll take two more awesome swings. Awesome swing! Some not some awesome swings! Oh man, those are both going to miss. I, I do just do like little sword dance with it. I'm just like, this is what could happen. <laughs> if you're not careful. And it's going to be... Oh, and I want to use a bonus action to heal myself. Just use Lay on Hands. And I'll restore some hit points to myself. I'll just do 10 hit points. Okay. Whoa, this is crazy. You're going to see all the, all the crazy stuff that goes in there. Look at that. Look at that fucking math. Anyway. Um, so you go ahead and heal yourself 10 points. And it's going to be Grisham's turn. I want to change the music here a little bit. Uh, still blind. I got nothing. I'm just going to roll that con check. All right. Oh, Lord. Oh, you are back. See. You're back. I can see. I see the light. And you, as you open your eyes, you see that Shadow is still like stumbling against the wall. And um, Vincent looks absolutely helpless. Shadow can see. She, she got it. On did the you way. did you I, save I it? it? Oh yeah, yeah no, you got out of it. it. Almost down. everyone's out of it again. Damn it! I need to get that back. See, I took off my little icon. To... Oh. And next up is going to be Shadow. Okay, I'm going to come forward and push my mouse too long. <laughs> and let's see who was hurting the most <laughs> um, I look badly injured but now I just look injured <laughs> I'll, I'll look at Venator I'll nope look. I'm, I look good Vincent how do you <laughs> I look, look good. I'm sitting on the ground crying <laughs> He looks emotionally damaged. Yeah. <laughs> emotionally and physically damaged. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna... Wait, he's not... Wait, did you, did you ask him how he's feeling? Yeah, so I'm asking him. Because his response... Like his response would be nothing, because he can't hear anything right now. He can't hear? Yeah, my eyes are, like, rolled to the back of my head, just looking around <laughs> the room. Grisham, do you need my healing? Sure. I won't say no. I won't say no to feel better. <laughs> yeah. Feel better. <laughs> and I'm gonna move. I kind of have the sniffles, you know. Like I think I'm coming out of the cold this winter weather. See, I can move that to here. And that's its turn. All right, that's my turn. All right. Next up is Vincent. Yeah, he'll do for nine. 
All right. Out of frustration, I'm just being, you know, unable to hear and see twice now. Um, <laughs> he is Helen Keller at the moment. I didn't realize that's what this creature did, but... I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my dance, try to do some wild magic. I'm gonna cast it off. It's out of frustration. I don't foresee myself getting out of this. Yeah. Wild magic. Wild magic. All right. Wild does that, does someone have a Does someone have a player's handbook open right now? Yeah. All right. What's the wild magic? Anybody know what the page is? He has to roll a d100 right now. Hold on. I gotta get to the page. Thirty. Wild magic surge. One o three. A thirty is a teleportation Ooh. to an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I get to pick the space then. Yeah, I would assume that it would just be a blind fire of. I figured you'd be like, oh, oh I'm gonna teleport. And gonna teleports the and then comes right back to the same spot. He's like, yeah, the campfire. Um, high or low? <laughs> Always low. Always low. Yeah. Oh damn it. Okay. I'm gonna teleport you onto that uh, that pile of straw right there. If you right. called out the wrong one, though, I was totally teleporting you onto that campfire and doing damage to you. <laughs> All right, this is a lot safer. Feels nice. This this feels a lot nicer. Um, um, you're still it. blind and deaf. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do the Constitution thing. But he can feel the hay. I thought about teleporting him on the beast back too, and I didn't do that. Um. All right, you save out of it, so you can now see and hear again. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and I'm in a new location. <laughs> You're like, what the yeah. fuck just happened? Should have like rolled a d20 and then numbered the squares. I thought them. about it, take and I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is gonna take too much time. Yeah. Um, it take much time. Uh, so you are back, Venator. You are up. Oh yeah. Feeling all confident now that I've been able to. You know, dodge its moves and then strike it down. So I'm gonna use that and kind of do my two attacks to make an X across its side. Oh, okay. The first one being a 13. That's going to miss. I whiff, catch nothing but air. But then I use that momentum to come back around and hopefully, uh, you know, strike it in its belly. And yeah, I just, that's um, going to miss whew. as well. You're so good at doing all those saves, not so good at doing all those hits. Nope. Um, all right, let's see if I recharge. I do! Oh boy! Oh, no. oh boy! Everybody go ahead and do a... Everybody go ahead and do a constitution save and throw for me, please. What's the radius on that, man? 180 on degrees radius. in front of it. Oh, my lord. <laughs> the radius is empty. Pass, pass, pass. Oh, I don't want to roll. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> what is it, con? Constitution saving throw. Your saves are good. Come on. Fail. Yes. Pass, 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 fail. Uh, Venator ah. is the only one who failed it. So, Venator, you okay. are blind and deaf. Um, ah. I'm going to go ahead and do my... What happened to everything? I'm going to do my charge attack. This time I'm only going to hit Venator, Shadow, and Cantharion. Uh, so go ahead and do a dexterity saving throw for me, please. Myself? Uh, Venator, Cantherion, and Shadow. Okay. With, uh, advantage? Or dis- well, I got a 9 and For you, seven. for you it would be disadvantage, but it don't matter. You rolled like shit. I'm actually critical failed. Oh, there you go. So rolling dex? Yep. Uh, Shadow, you failed. And Cantharion, you succeeded. Uh, so Cantharion, you are fine, but these two guys are going, you're going to get knocked back there, you're going to get knocked back like here. I guess that blade can stay there. Uh, and you each take eight points of damage. Um, Cantharion, you're okay. You don't get an attack of opportunity because it never leaves melee range with you. Um... You said eight points of damage? Eight points of damage. 
Uh, as it as it sort of charges forward and knocks you guys back, you begin to feel like a strange warmth inside of the room. Um, the ground beneath, or no, the, I'm not, not the ground actually. The uh, the the ceiling above this creature begins to glow, uh, sort of like a sort of like a, a, a yellowish hue. And as it glows, you see almost like this fist come down from the ceiling and slam down onto the back of the creature. Um, as it slams down onto the back of the creature, it is going to do four points of damage to it. Uh, go ahead and make a... Um, actually, I'm not even going to make you do that. Uh, this fist sort of flies down from the air um, and slams down onto the creature. And lo and behold, from the doorway, we see uh, Jacob, the Heart of Tear, has walked in. He's covered in like these um, in these ornate like church furs, like so. It, so he has like all of his fancy ass fucking armor on underneath, but he has like these uh, these furs over the top. Um, you also hear like another roar, and this time, as opposed to being like that blood curdling like weird dissonant sound it sounds big like a lot bigger um and from the other entrance you see let me see let me get this on here from the other entrance comes this enormous bear it's like uh it looks like a uh like a like a a growler bear you know, like a mix between a grizzly bear and a polar bear. Um, and it's huge. And mounted on its back is... Oh, where did I do it? Where... I gotta get it. I gotta get it here. Ah, oh, fuck. Hold on. Hold on, I gotta get in the room, guys. Hold on, I gotta get in the room. I got this. <laughs> and mounted on its back... <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> is this uh what what appears to be like an eight year old girl. Um I'm gonna go ahead. Appears to be to me. She's so kawaii. <laughs> I'm gonna bring the bear into here. The bear doesn't get into melee range. Um and she hops off next to it. Uh you hear you hear Jacob yell back to it, uh well, don't just stand there. Kill it. Um, and it's going to be Grisham's, or I'm sorry, Cantharion's turn. All right. So I'll take two more swings at the creature. Two more glorious swings, emboldened by the presence of Jacob. Out of town. Jacob's just here to steal your glory. That is he going to, to take hit. the title for himself. And I fail my damage, but that's okay. <laughs> Jacob Elk Slayer. <laughs> so that's going to do eight points of damage. So it's down to this number right here. Wait, is this like one of those crazy-looking elk things from uh, from The Witcher Three? I'm going to show you a picture of it whenever uh, whenever we finish the combat, just for fun. We'll take a break after the combat, and I'll show you a picture of it. You know, if you had a picture, you could have used it as a token. Uh, I didn't want to do all that work because I have a full-time job, and I had an audition <laughs> you this week. To make it into a token. I had an audition this week for a television show on Fox, so I had a lot of work to do today. Okay. Yeah. I didn't all get right. that audition. So, anyway. so my second swing, 18. That is going to hit. With nine magic slashing damage. For nine magic slashing damage. <laughs> Sorry, I laughed at how much health it has. Um, next up is going to be Grisham. Uh, I'm not blind anymore, so let's just. I'm just gonna close in. No tricks, no no fanciness. Just just gonna move up and. It's prone, isn't it? Didn't he smash it down? Is it still prone? Um. Yeah, let's make it prone. That seems fucking cool. That seems that seems like a cool thing that that Jacob could do. 
All right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, like, basically, like, walk up its back, and I'm going to, like, try to just short sword the back of its neck, like its spine or something, like some kind of vital looking area. Thanks so much, and... Crimson Beard. You know what? I just realized I think I know who Crimson Beard is. I think I think I know really? this man. You just now know who that is? I think I now know who that man is. I just realized it. <laughs> it took you that long? Yeah, because I didn't even notice he liked my Facebook status. Alright, wall, wall of dice. Here we go. Here we go. And that's the crappiest attack roll ever, unless I have advantage. That, I'm going to give you advantage. Yeah, I'll let you hit it. Um, That's going to go down to this number right here. So you hit it pretty good. It's looking pretty rough. Uh, Shadow, you're up. I'm going to use my spiritual weapon again on it. It's right in its face. Smack it down. Get my spell up. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I've got a lot of things to scroll through. It's okay. Take your time. Do, 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 do. That goes down to this number right here. Wait, we waited all that time for six damn? No. Yeah. Did I kill it? Did I kill it? <laughs> no, you didn't kill it. You did stab take it, though. Take the glory. You, po you poked it with the pointy bit. Um, Vincent, it is your turn. He was, like, yelling at the girl and the bear, like... Allies, correct? Um, he was yelling at you guys, saying, uh, Ignore saying, the girl and the bear. saying, uh, well, don't just look, kill it. Oh, I thought he was yelling at the girl, like, he's been doing weird stuff, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, okay. Ride a um, giant bear into a cave and we're not supposed to look. Don't look at it. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna. Lamo turn again and firebolt it for 1d10. Bear can only go invisible when you're not looking at it. How can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real? Uh, that is going to hit. Sweet. And That's going to do five points of damage there. That's going to go on to this tiny number right here. And Venator, you are up. Um, so when it, knocked, when, it, when it struck me, I'm knocked prone, correct? You are knocked prone, yes. Okay, and you're uh, also blind and deaf. Yes. So I'm very much disoriented. So I kind of like feel around and find the ground and I stand up and... Uh, I guess I try to make a save against the blind and deafness. What's the uh, save I need to make? Uh, DC 10. No, Constitu I mean, like, I'm sorry. Constitution saving throw 10. Constitution saving throw. That's going to save. On the save. Critical on the save. So that's my action, correct? Yes. So I, I get up and then I, or yeah, I get up and then I shake it off and I look and I'm like, Where'd the bear come from? <laughs> <laughs> um. So after you do that, uh, oh, okay. I, so immediately after you said like, "Where'd the bear come from?" The eight-year-old girl goes, "Momo," and then the bear like sort of rears up with like these giant paws, and the paws are like the size of like half of this thing. I can't, I can't I begin to tell you how fucking big this thing is. Um. And it swings its hand at the uh, at the creature. I am going to try and hit it. That is going to miss, and a second attack is going to also miss. So it like swings left and right, but it isn't able to uh, to make any contact. Next up is going to be Jacob, who how far away is he right now? Uh, he can get up to here. And then it's going to be the creature's turn. Um, I'm going to make a shift back this way. And can I recharge this? Nope, I failed. Fuck. 
Um, I'm gonna attack Grisham twice. Uh, that's gonna be a 16 15. versus AC. What? 15. 15? I hit you one time. I didn't hit you with the second one. And that's going to do. Can I uh, can I do uncanny dodge on that? Uh, uncanny dodge will half the damage, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can. You take five points of damage. All right. Five was half. You were gonna take ten. Um. Next up is Cantharion. I do the uh, the salute to to Jacob as. As I go in for the kill. In your in your as your bonus action. Yeah. <laughs> just like a just like a nod. But yeah. And yeah, I'll move move back in and try to take it down. That's gonna hit for eight points of damage. So that takes it down to this number right here. And the second one's going to hit, which takes it down to this number right here. And Grisham's up. <laughs> Let me throw up all these dice. That is a six... No, it's a 17, because you have... Uh, you have advantage, advantage. So. so you do 23 points of damage to it. How do you want to kill it? I'll just reach around and like draw my short sword like right around its throat, like right around its neck, just ring it. And then you just you just sort of pull it back, and then just yeah, pull pull back on an antler and just reach under it and just as right you around. as you pull it back and like take your blade across its throat, uh, you see. Like, it exhales, like, the, the last bit of that, you know, like, uh, like you, you know how when you're cold, you can, you can see your breath? It exhales, like, a, like a rather large, like, uh, cloud of, of breath as it falls to the ground and lies, uh, and lies dead on the floor. Um, you've killed it. This creature is now lying dead there. Uh, let's go ahead and take like a quick break before we get before we get into the remainder of the role playing because we've been we were we've, we were just now in combat for an extended period of time yeah um so let's go ahead and take a quick break uh while we're taking a break i'm gonna go ahead and show you what this creature looks like and uh you're right joe it does look a lot like the creature from well i actually can't show you because i'm screen capping and it won't show it on the screen here let me see if I no, can. I can see it. I'll go on your thing here. All right, I'm on your your page. Um, let me see here. Let me see if I can add can a scene. Just upload it somewhere and link it in the chat because I can't really load up the add video. window capture. Wait, no, cancel. Add add window capture. Okay. Um, hold on one second. Select sub region. That it? Oh god, that's not it. That's not what I wanted. I just no, realized I was listening to Mute City for the past 20 minutes. It is doing... that right there that you can see on the screen here. You can now see it on the stream. Uh, you can't see it on your screens. But that's what it looks like. I think it's from The Witcher. Um, I, found it, I found it online. Uh... By the way, if anyone's in here hanging out in D and D, they actually do. Um, they do like uh, there's a D and D subreddit called D and D Next, I think, that does like a whole bunch of uh, cool like monster a day kind of things. So if you ever wonder, if you ever want like some cool monsters to look at, uh, or some like cool things to add to your own adventures, that's a great one to do. Um, have you guys seen it already? You see what that thing that I'm talking about? No. What did you? Think? It's on stream right now. You have to pull up the stream to see it. I pulled up. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing I was thinking of. Yeah, I think I think it's yeah. in The Witcher as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So let me go ahead that's and remove that. Um, yeah. So that was it. Let's go ahead and take like a really quick like three minute break, 
And then okay. uh, and then we'll come right back. We'll do we'll do a quick bio break and have anybody get anything they want to, and then we'll get back into it. Cool. Cool. I'll put on some some nice music while uh, while we're gone. Actually, let me put on something that won't get me kicked off of Twitch. Let's do it like this. Okay. How's everyone uh, doing tonight? Enjoying the session, I hope. Oh boy, are you actually talking to the people? People? I don't know. <laughs> I like just sat down. Yeah. I was, make, I was gonna make myself a gin and ginger ale, but I realized all I have is ginger ale. I don't have any gin. Let me go ahead and clear up this map while we're uh, while we're waiting. You gotta get some of that not your father's ginger ale. It's supposed to be good stuff. Oh man, we got another follower encounter, Sydney. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, we're actually on like a quick break right now. We're gonna come back in like one minute. Um, we're just waiting on all the other all the other bio breaks. I gotta have some alcohol in this house. I'll be right back.
Okay. I'm back. Yes. We're just getting down to some tavern music. Who are you talking to? What kind of tavern is this? <laughs> the best kind. Who are you talking to? Me? <laughs> hey, Rob. <laughs> I want to okay. cut off like five of the horns, like the antlers. I want to take like maybe like about ten inches of the horns, and they're like spikes. Yeah, I want to get some meat. Hungry? Because I, I feel like we're going to run out of food. Elk would be kind of tasty. Yeah, it's probably kind of gamey. I bet you it has a lot of fat. I had elk sausage one time, and it was delicious. I don't know about that. <laughs> this is coming from the same the character who made who made uh, horse jerky. <laughs> no, I'm going in real life. I had elk sausage, and it was amazing. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't keep the straight face at that. I had it in um, San Francisco. No, it was Portland. That's what it was. It was Portland. It doesn't sound terrible. Yeah, we went to a place called The Worst. W U R S T, and they had like Ugh. elk sausage. At one time, they had like a reptile sausage that was no longer on the menu. Uh, had like regular Probably sausage, cheddar worse. Did they have any erectile sausage? Maybe. It's kind of Wait, tough. Though. Really, Julian? <laughs> I'll filter. That's what I go with. Hey, it's dances. Dances with Wolves 69. Thanks so much, Crimson Beard. Good buddy of mine. Just, fo just now following us on Twitch. Good to see you, bud. Took you long enough. Damn. Yeah, it took me long enough. I mean, I, at the first, at the time, it didn't, it didn't click. And then later on, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I know this guy. Yeah, I know, I know this guy, this guy. I know this guy. Um, it's nice, it's nice to have people in here. You know, normally we we uh, we have a little bit more difficulty picking up followers because we tend to go around when some other D and D streams go. Um, but I'll go ahead and do my shtick while we're waiting on while we're waiting on my buddy to come back. Um, we do, we stream Dungeons and Dragons every, uh, Tuesday, hopefully most Tuesday. Um, and we got another follower, Dancing Wolf 69 and for some reason Link is really small now. <laughs> it's weird. Um, the, uh, we try and stream every Tuesday. Um, we are on our 12th episode, so if you missed any of the previous episodes, you can check those out at my YouTube channel, which is directly beneath me. You can also feel free to follow me on Twitter. Uh, which is also down there. I tweet out every time that we're going to go live, just in case you don't get the emails or anything like that. But, you know, feel free to tell your friends or swing on by or whatever you want to do. Also, at my YouTube channel, you can find out a couple of different things that I've worked on. Still sort of fleshing it out because a bunch of stuff is in, uh, is in editing. I do a whole bunch of acting and stuff like that. So we're going to be putting a whole bunch of stuff up there pretty soon. Um, but yeah, yeah, super exciting. What was that um, job interview you had at Fox? Oh, it wasn't a job interview. It was a, um, it was a, this is, this is kind of loud. I didn't realize how loud this got. It was an audition for a television show called Cooper Barrett's Guide to Surviving Life. Uh, I auditioned for Tom Hench, which is like a guy. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to spoil too much because like, you know, no one wants to, it's no one wants to spoil the episode. It was like, I, I auditioned to play a guy, um, who was like, sort of like a guest star. Didn't get it, but you know what? There's always next time. Um, and it was exciting to be on the lot and exciting to do it, so... Uh, and then come January, I'm going to be taking some classes with Upright Citizens Brigade. So I'm going to be doing some improv comedy with uh, with UCB cool. out here in LA, which is pretty exciting too. So I'm I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, is everybody Wolves, back? Ironically, is a friend of mine, and he was there when we tried the elk sausage. Was he? Oh, was he really? Yeah. 
There you go. You got that going for these you. This is one of my magic traveling buddies. So that's how you can him, tell. That's how you can tell a real friend. Phil. Yeah, him, me, and Phil went to uh, Portland together, and we uh, ended up at the worst and uh, had some delicious sausages. I have a feeling like I might have met Dances at Wolves before. Uh, you may have. I think so. Um, did you have a sausage party? We did. It was what? delicious. Ah, we got awesome. we got super drunk. There were sausages everywhere. It's uh, it's 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 weak. It's <laughs> weak just, joke Tuesday, everybody. They were, just, they were just hanging from the ceiling. We were just grabbing them, sticking them wherever we could. Oh man, that just sounds <laughs> awful. In and around my mouth. Oh, that's just <laughs> shoving them. In. See now, I now I have to put that thing on my Twitch channel where like I like I I have to like warn people about mature content before they show up. This you is not mature content at all. This is very <laughs> immature content. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is everybody back? Everybody ready to go? Go a little, go a little bit farther. See where see where this see how deep the rabbit hole goes. Yo, also buffalo is delicious. Buffalo. Oh, everybody, everybody's here. Like the football team. Yeah, that that and the uh, and the the, the animal. I, I had it, and I was like, no wonder we nearly hunted this thing to extinction. It is delicious. <laughs> it is so good. So good. Um, all right. So, the creature lies dead on the ground of this, uh, of this cave. Uh, you see that Jacob has shown up with this mysterious young girl and this enormous bear. Uh, the bear sort of, like, moves forward to sniff at the to sniff at the corpse before turning back to look at the little girl uh and the girl sort of like nods her head and the bear begins to just like consume this uh this creature that's that's laying here on the ground um jacob walks up uh to cantherion and he says well i was afraid that i wouldn't get to you in time it's good to see you brother and I just do the salute and say, it seems this time you, you've come to our rescue, brother. Well, it's your works in mysterious ways. Yes, we thought we were here to save you. A rescue? We have that. It appears as if uh, you maybe showed up in the nick of time. I was tracking you, not the beast. It appears that we were not the only ones following you. And he like nods over towards the towards the bear and, and the little girl. Um, the girl sort of like is is admiring uh, like shadows uh, like weaponry and 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 armor and stuff. She recognizes that your armor has that seer that seal of of tear, and she recognizes it as like the same thing that was that was on like you know the other guy's armor. So she sort of like is she's cautious, but she you know. Is um has like a has like a child childlike curiosity about her uh, whenever it comes to you. Um. Uh, Jacob says, "Well, it appears as if you were able to hold your own, and you're warm now, if not for the storm." And he looks back out towards the uh, towards the, like the the mouth of the cave. And who is your companion here? Yeah, what's with the run? He uh he gestures towards her. I gotta pull up her name again. Because what did we name Mary. her? Starts no, her name R. is not Roberta. Mary. Her name is uh Annie. It is not Annie. Nope. Roberta? It's Anna. Uh spelled <laughs> with an O. It's O N N A. Sure it is. <laughs> the M is silent. I swear to God. I'm gonna put it on the streams so that way you know I named this character. Oh, you can't see it because it doesn't scroll that far down. Her name's Anna. Her name is Mana. Mana. Type it. Uh, type it into the thing. It's O N N A. Let's see here. O N O M M A. Anna. Um. He gestures over towards her and says, "This is Anna. She was kind enough to give me a place to stay for the night, and when the blizzard got too rough." I feared moving forward, but I could sense that you were coming, and I thought it best to try and see if I could help you further. 
What have you learned? So, when last we spoke, we... Alright, refresh my memory. When last we spoke, <laughs> Rob, was it, was it right before we went in search of the Hellhound? Was that when last... Like Jacob. The last yeah, time that you, the last time that you spoke with Jacob, was when you came. You came back from the dragon. The Gosh. the weird ink dragon thing. Yeah, and then we were gonna go off with uh, yeah, so Shorty, fire, right? Thing. That was like right before Shorty. Yeah, right before Shorty was the last time that that you met uh, or that you've seen Jacob. Shorty. I want to change this to something different. I don't want it to be too intense, but at the same time. Actually, so I just... I'm good. Let me go ahead. No, I'm just changing the music. I'm trying to find, like, a good feel. Yeah, so I, I just want to fill them in on everything, so... I'm going to say, well... Turns out the beast that uh, we were we were sent after for Shorty... Um, Ironhide. Has, How is he? He is alive. I kind of, like... Spit on the ground. <laughs> had, I just kind of nod Venator's direction. We had a bit of an incident between him and Venator. Incident? That seems peculiar. He came off to me as a very upstanding gentleman. Perhaps a bit unorthodox. I'm sorry? There were... The egos got in the way. You know, tensions heightened. Shorty was dealing with loss. Uh, things were said. Loss? Uh, yeah, so the, a large portion of his tribe was decimated by that, that creature as it escaped. I'm sorry to hear that. My prayers were, go to his go to his fallen brethren. Yeah, of course. And, and you know, we were able to track down the beast... Uh, defeat it, and it actually left behind a ring, and I point over to Vincent, and Vincent is actually able to sort of summon the beast? Sort of? We, we're, we still don't quite understand how it works. He gestures it He gestures over towards Vincent and says, uh, and says, Is this true, sorcerer? Can you control the beast? Yeah, it seems, uh, each time it gets a little easier. That's interesting. I've never heard of anything in such a way. Did you show... Did you show Priscilla? In a way. Yes. Care to explain? There was an accident... at a place... You know... You don't have to be vague with me, son. I've spent plenty of time in Mauricium. You can tell me. Uh, what was the said he means mistake. <laughs> Who, the, the initiate? Did you know Theodore, oh, too. by chance? Did, had you met Theodore, a young, younger man, had, had recently he joined the, the church? He sort, of, he sort of shakes his head. He says, no, Theodore, that does not ring a bell at all. It was a young underling um, aide to the Arbiter of the Order. No, Theodore... Were we talking about the guy that... Was, yeah, Theodore was the intern. Yeah, he <laughs> left town. <laughs> it's irrelevant. The, 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 interns, the oh, intern's God. name was... Yeah, it was Theodore. Yeah. Uh, he, he was the one who... He, he was like the, the new initiate for the for the the church of redemption that was eaten by the oh he was the red shirt the red yeah. shirt yeah oh he was oh so he was eaten <laughs> i just remember he was gone i don't remember if he was eaten. he was definitely gone okay well we're gonna go with he gone to be <laughs> um no one knows what happened to him yeah i shouldn't say eaten because technically never mind whatever he's just gone ceases to be I'm, I'm afraid I'm a bit confused. So Vincent is still, as I said, he can't quite control it yet. And this was kind of the first time he brought the beast about. And uh, the beast 
seems to have made this 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 young man vanish. Uh, and Priscilla was seemingly at a loss for words. She didn't quite understand what had happened either, or where this 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 thing had taken it. He gives you a he gives you a sort of quizzical look and says, "It seems that a wake of death follows you, Cantharion. If you continue this, certainly they will rename you the Wrath of Tear." I think that's an honor I'm not ready for yet. I don't but think Callista I... would be ready for it either. You have never met Callista, but you know that she is a short fuse and has been known to kill a lot of people. Like, she's like the person that you send if, like, you know, all right, diplomacy's out the window. This needs to get done. Like, if if there were, if there was, like, a, like a really, like, bad bounty hunter out there that i would i would actually say that you you don't know Callista that much if anything grisha might have heard of her before because he probably dealt with a couple of guys that like have been at the wrong end of the sword for her she doesn't fight with swords either i'm not going to tell you what she does fight with because you might find her later oh we can turn her into an enemy too like we do every other npc well jacob's not an enemy yet yeah. Not yet. We're working on it. <laughs> so you said that you could control it, but then it killed the initiate. Yeah, that was the first trial. The first trial? Yeah. There were more. A few. So, you're familiar with the Order? Familiar, yes. They can be found in almost any city in Oberon. What Vincent can't control is his lust of power to use the beast. I can't say that I know the gnome long enough to make that sort of assumption, but I will take your word for it. Well, we had an audience with... Uh... What'd you say? Wait, what did Vincent say? It's gonna be silent. Yeah. <laughs> Just brood. We had an audience with uh, High Brother Jaden of the Order. I, I wasn't familiar with him, but perhaps you've, you've had dealings with him. I've never met the High Brother Jaden. Not that I'm aware of. I try best to stay away from the Order and their doings. My job is to deal with the retribution of Tyr. Not so much to trifle in the ways of politics. You have to understand. Well, the Order now wants to have nothing to do with us. And why would that be? a good thing or a bad thing. I was of the understanding that the Order does not side with any one side of political conflict, and the Church, and the Church of Redemption not is not politics. political in any way, shape, or form. It would be Vincent. Do you care to explain Vincent? What was the guy's name? The, the priest guy? Which one? Yeah, it was Jaden. Jaden was the one where we summoned the Hellhound. The it was High, High Brother Jaden was the one that you summoned the Hell, Hellhound. It was, um... Ulrich? Grand, I think it was Grand Arbiter Ulrich, who was the guy that you met the first time. Something like that. I have it written down on one of these sheets of paper. And then High Apostle Karen Borg. Grand Arbiter Ulrich is the one you met the first time. He is the representative for High for the High Apostle Karen Kar- Kar- Karimbor. Sorry, I always pronounce it wrong. Because I want to I want to say Kelebrimbor, which is I think is from something else, I don't know. High Apostle Karimbor. Yeah. We were uh, we we're trying to talk to the High Apostle and we were sent another person. I I was trying to talk to him. Oh yeah. Go on. <laughs> no need to argue, person. brothers. We're fine. There's nothing out there, and he gestures towards he gestures towards the outside of the cave. Unless you look forward to freezing to death, and I personally like being alive. It's also refreshing to see all of you alive as well. He gives you all a look. He gives a little bit of a longer look to Shadow. We were pleading for aid for my people when Vincent took it upon himself to change their opinion quite drastically. See, my, my shoes were untied at the time. They most certainly were not. He does not believe you. <laughs> I rolled a 20. 
right. Yeah, so well, the ring fired off, and the, uh... I swear this kind of thing never happens. Yeah. It, <laughs> the beast showed up, fought some guards, scared some people, but it's all good now. I was able to defuse the situation enough that we didn't go into open conflict. However, we're no longer welcome with the order and any hope that we had. Priscilla had mentioned two other other potential conflicts. The, the war to the west, Mance had offered some sort of a parlay with us. Uh, and, and to the south, of course, Callista uh, doing war with, with those lizard folk. Um, the either one. What's that? The Lechartan. Yes. Yes. I've heard. Uh, we were hoping that, that since we couldn't be in all three places at once, that we could garner some sort of aid from them. They could maybe, maybe they had ties with some mercenary group. We could hire out something, something to aid us. But uh, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be possible at this point. Well, it seems like had you not cut off ties with Ironhide, you might have been able to send him in your stead. That seems accurate. Did you meet anyone else on this journey? We met... Um, we met so many people that uh, we don't really want to concern ourselves with the details. He sort of puts his hand up and he says, he says, you, you appear to be beating around the bush, brother. And he turns, he turns to Venator, he says, did you meet anyone else on this journey? Yes, Kanthir, and tell them about that small little town that you riled up. So I totally wasn't stalling so that I could just, you know, jog my memory. Because <laughs> I have such a good memory that I don't need to do his, such things. His name's Wallace. <laughs> uh, we were in a, a town of Duncaster on the way back. We had just, you know, defeated that, that the beast, found the ring, and we were traveling on our way back, and we, we stumbled upon this small town. Um, and, and found a, a murder had taken place. and um, A murder? Well, that seems to all be fitting into the pattern here. And of yes, course, my, Adrian had to try to save the day. My keen investigatory skills, sharp as you know they are, were unable to determine the killer. Uh, however, we did run into an interesting gentleman who... Seemed to know more than we did about it, and had some sort of a. It was like a barrel that, like, fire shot out of. I've never seen anything like it. It was it was quite extraordinary. Some sort of a weapon. And uh, was his name Wallace? You said his name is Wallace. 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 Yes. Yeah, well, as we knew him to be. You mentioned his name is Wallace. He he seemed he seemed like he wasn't a threat. Um, However, but the townsfolk we wanted blood. Since we were so unable to determine who the killer to... was, we were given till dawn, and at that point, the town constable, uh, whose name escapes me, Rickert, R Rickert, 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 uh, just said we need we need to know who it was, and at that point, the town was sort of in this this frenzied rage. They just needed they didn't need justice. They needed uh, satisfaction at that point, and well, we did kind of point the finger at Wallace, didn't we? Wallace made it clear that he was going to make a decision if we didn't, and I wanted no part of it, but I couldn't stand idly by and just let some random person take the blame, and that was what Wallace was prepared to do. He turns to uh, he turns to Grisham and he says, "And what happened of this wanderer?" Talking about Wallace. Yes. Well, he was strung up on the gallows uh, by the townsfolk, or I guess sort of by us, uh, and blamed for the murder. And um, as as the rope dropped, he uh, vanished in a magical little puff of smoke. Hmm. He did he did uh, mutter something about seeing us again 
which I think was probably supposed to be a little ominous, but, you know, I've heard that before. He had accidentally killed uh, Rickard. So the townsfolk definitely wanted his blood for that. Do you think he has... But that was not his fault. Do you think he has any sort of criminal ties? Perhaps, yes. perhaps oh, the sure three and one? Does. He definitely had skills that would imply that he could that pay he the bills. <laughs> no, no. There's, there's no saying that he doesn't have ties to three and one because they have their they have their nine fingers and everything. But um, do you think there's anything connecting him to what has been going on? I might be able to find out once we get back to the city, but for right now, we have no idea. And what of the war in Maricor? The camps are assembled. It seems the war is happening, and we talked about meeting with Mance for this parlay. It it didn't seem right. There seems seems something off about it. It best we could figure it was some sort of a trap or some sort of a lure. It didn't seem like anything that would really play into any sort of a peace agreement. A bold strategy. Mance is not a man who would talk openly, but I don't entirely see him as an individual who wouldn't want peace as well. However, I trust your judgment. For now, I think it's probably best if we get you all home. Or... Somewhere that we can call home. You look a little banged up, to say the least. Uh, he turns so over we towards have a wagon waiting for us in the mountains. A wagon? You got a wagon all the way up here? Yeah, we had to leave it behind at the, the narrow pass. Oh, brother! I had this back. great idea. It involved this rope, and uh, it would have never worked, but it was glorious. Yes, I have faith that the, that that your idea was in fact glorious. He turns towards Anna, and Anna look. Anna, as she was like, she was like reaching up to like touch like Shadow's armor. But as he turns towards her, he asks. He says, um, "He says, Anna." And she looks back at him, and says, "And says, oh yes, what can I help you with?" Uh, he asks, um, "I hate to bother you, but would you perhaps be able to have us for just one more night?" And she says, uh, and she says, oh boy, we get guests! And, like, gets super excited. Um, and, like, when she gets excited, the bear, like, looks up from, like, eating this corpse, and it's, like, covered in, like, you know, blood and shit. But the bear looks a little bit excited, too. Almost, like, you feel weird, because this bear is, like, the size of an elephant. Um, but it also looks kind of happy when the little girl is happy. Um, so, uh, Jacob turns back to you and says, uh, and says... I believe we may be able to brave the blizzard. Oh, what's up, BM player? Thanks so much for giving us a follow, man. We appreciate it. Happy hunting. Um, Jacob turns back to you and he says, uh, he says, I believe we can brave the blizzard, and we might have a place to stay tonight. Would you wish to come? If you brought a blizzard, we can't just camp here in this cave. He, uh, he, sm supposed to find you. he smiles and says, I believe the warmth of her cabin might be a little bit better than that tent you have outside. How far is it? Oh my gosh, thank you so much, man. Thanks so much for the donation. Five whole dollars. Here's hoping for for a one and wagon explosions. I gotta go ahead and see if there was any more on there. Uh, what did you say? Grisham? I just asked uh, how far away it is to her home. It wouldn't be far. Nothing but a 45 minute walk. A blizzard. It's entirely up to you. It, it makes no difference to me. Whatever whatever our fearless leader wishes to do, I look over at Cantharion. He uh he turns to Cantharion and like sort of like hits him on the chest with the back of his hand. He says, "Fearless, huh?" <laughs> I beg to differ. Apparently sarcasm is lost on the church. <laughs> that was one time, brother, and we swore we'd never talk about it again. Yes, yes, and I and you have my word. This is the last time. Uh, 
Yeah, I'd, I'd say if, if you made the journey safely, we should be able to make it back. And I just kind of glance around. And I'd say any conditions would be an improvement upon these. Uh, the cabin sounds very nice. And you, Elf? He says to Venator as he talks to the voices inside his head. He's chiseling. He's chiseling Sorry. into the cave. I'm thanking, I'm thanking people in chat. Yeah, because they're awesome. Because we have the coolest followers ever. Um, actually, before all that, while like the very beginning of the conversation was happening, I actually wanted to kind of like wrestle with the bear like over this corpse and see if I could detect magic before it started like devouring it. Okay. Um, I'm I'm not gonna make you I'm not gonna make you roll or anything like that. Well, I mean, it's just a it's just a a spell. Okay. You you do detect that there is a hint of magic but the magic appears to be like leaving it like like leaving its body um mm -hmm. such a, in such a way that uh like you you've seen this before you've hunted magical magical creatures before um this creature is not innately magical like something has imbued it with magic mm. um does that make sense what i just said there? yes okay do um, I see like the essence leaving it at all, or like, you do, and uh, and Vincent does, but no Wait. one else can sort. Of, no one else can see it. Do, do I see it kind of like trailing, trailing off anywhere, like leading to a source? I imagine it it's just... like a wisp of air. Like imagine mm. like smoke as it slowly just becomes like part of the the ether. Okay. Yeah. And so then I guess I kind of like poke around with my sword. While the bear starts digging into it, do I notice anything like on the creature at all? Like nothing on there. I mean, as you poke around, you just it it appears to be like you know a, like a corpse. There are there are organs. Um, if anything, it looks something. It looks like it has been mutated slightly, but there's nothing like in it or on it. There's no like amulet. There's no like nothing like that. Okay, uh, I kind of just whip my sword to get like just the blood and guts off. And then kind of wipe it on maybe my leg or something. I resheat my sword, put my shield back on my back. Okay. And what was the question that was directed towards me? Uh, it, it was he, he was asking if you would be if you if you would be open to staying with Anna for the night. I imagine it's better than whatever these people think they can gather together. It appears your long travels with one another, Cantherion, have built you quite the friendship. He says sarcastically. It is an alliance of convenience for some, a friendship for others, uh, a mission of mercy for, for still others. It's, it's a quite a very group. You have a way with words. He turns to, he turns to Vincent and he, says, uh, and he says, and what have you known? Would you care to stay? Yep. Uh, I think the little girl and the bear, yeah, handle themselves. Yeah, I don't see why not. And he uh, he turns to Shadow and says, and finally you, Desert Rose. Yes, of course. All right. I threw open my mouth a little. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he sort of turns to you and says, uh, and says, well, in that case, I believe Momo will lead the way, and. Uh, and Anna sort of like nudges the bear, and the bear, the bear's like, "Oh yeah, Momo's gonna lead the way." He doesn't talk; he's a fucking bear. But like you know, he like walks out of the cave, uh, and you all follow them into the uh, into the blizzard. Uh, we're not gonna go through all the blizzard stuff. I'm just gonna get you to where I wanted to get you, which is to here. So, you find yourselves inside a quaint cabin. Uh, inside the cabin, there's like, um, there's like a, there's like a table that, uh, that has like, like four stools on it. There's only one bed, but there's also like a very, very large, uh, thing of bedding. Um, the cabin itself isn't huge, but it's big enough to get the bear inside and to have the bear stay inside as well. Uh, there is a fireplace that has a fire and another makeshift bed at the bottom. Um... From when you first show up, you imagine that that makeshift bed is probably where Jacob had slept last night. Um, so let me go ahead and put you guys on here. If you want to explore the house, you are free to do so. 
Um, but let me get it. And who am I missing? Boop, 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 boop. I need Vincent. Okay. Uh, so you find yourselves inside this house. Let me go ahead and scroll over so that way the, the stream can see the entirety of the house here. So you find yourself inside this house. Um, Anna sits at one of the tables, and uh, and Jacob sits at this at the stool across from Cantharion. Um, he looks to you, and he says, uh, he says, "So, have you been made aware of what it is that we're searching for out here?" just knew that you were investigating another creature he uh he reaches like like into his his sort of like backpack area and like folds out uh like a sheet of papers that are in front of him they're drawings and on those drawings there's there appears to be like a like a makeshift uh like a, like a poorly crude oh bm player thank you so much for the donation man we appreciate it uh, thirty dollars. Thank you so much, dude. Um, he he puts down the, he puts down the drawings in front of you, and on the drawings there appears to be like this uh like a crudely drawn large cat, or it it appears to be cat like in in feature. Uh, and he says um and he says there have been reports of a creature that can. Do abilities similar to what we've seen before up here and I fear it may be related to what we found before have you seen this we haven't right <laughs> no you have not yeah. nothing nothing like this the, again the hellhound was quite the fantastic creature I'd imagine similar. They, they must be connected somehow. He uh, he sort of nods his head and says, um, and says, "Yes, I, I do fear that they may be connected. And I fear that the more time that we take to find it, the more lives that will be lost. We have found ourselves in quite an issue, friends." The world now tears itself apart. And I fear there's only so much that we can do to keep it together. He, uh, he turns to Grisham as, uh, and, and sort of like slides the, slides the picture over. And he says, um, he says, what do you make of this? Is this anything that you've seen before? And there's no response. I don't think. I don't think. What? what? Huh? Nah. Okay. <laughs> I was talking to Grisham before, but there was no response. Wait, um, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I got lost. He, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think you're <laughs> for like a split second. <laughs> oh, wait, he he uh, slid something over to me. What was it? He, was he, sli he slides the, the crudely drawn picture over to you, and he says, Can you make anything of this? Okay, well, you have to explain this. It, it's like a it's like a crudely drawn picture, but it appears to be like a large creature with cat-like features. Um, he says that it it has similar capabilities of what you've seen before. Something that is not of this world. Um, something that something that appears as if it shouldn't exist in real life, much like. The giant hellhound thing that you found, and the giant ink thing that you found. I keep saying thing because I don't want to like emphasize what they are, without mm -hmm. like, yeah. Oh man, we have so many uh, friends yeah. right now. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've not fought or anything that looks like this. Um, maybe I've seen something like that in a. <laughs> An hallucination or something. <laughs> he he smiles and laughs and says uh, and says, 
It sounds and looks like something that would be from a children's tale. And I'm afraid I would be laughing more if it wasn't for the fact that we've seen so many so far. Where, is this, where did this picture come from? He, uh, he says, um, there are, there are dragonborn archivists who have been keeping track of the changes in the weather lately. And upon learning about the more intense winters, this creature was sighted. Very few people have gotten a very good view of it. But just as it is before, people have gone missing. So if it's from the Dragonborn, is it something that's in their lore, or is it something they've archived from somewhere else? He like, where does the lore originate? He shakes his head and he like pu he pulls out like two books and places them on the places them on the table. I've done intense research on the Dragonborn, and I have found nothing of this in any of their myths. I fear that, unlike their, whew, sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. Ugh. I fear that unlike their stories, unlike what they tell themselves, their folklore. This might be real. Well, I mean, it's probably like similar to these other be these other beasts. I mean, what we've been seeing lately, there's no reason to disbelieve it. But if you can't pinpoint the source, I don't know where we would start to look. He sort of he sort of sighs. Um, I feel if we are to find it, we have to find more people who may have seen it. Now there's numerous ways that we can go. We can head toward Winter's Keep, I'm sorry, Winter's Home, or the Emerald Mountains. But I feel that we have to find something before we can start on this journey, before we will be able to get back on track. The way that these blizzards are going, I can track nothing. He, uh, he turns to Venator and says, You, you're a ranger. Is there any way that you could find it? I look down at the, the picture that's in front of uh, Grisham. And what is it that I'm looking at? It is a... Alright, I'm going to say it again. It is a crudely drawn picture of a creature with what appears to have cat-like features. It's a kitty cat. It's a big-ass cat. Those of you playing the drinking game, take a drink. Benatar <laughs> <laughs> didn't pay attention to something. Take a drink. I can't, I can't pay attention to chat and Rob at the same time. I can only do one or the other. Um, I look at it and I kind of examine it for a bit. And I look over at Jacob and say, I'd have to have some kind of trace of it in, in person. Uh, any kind of tracks or essence, uh, whereabouts, a, a direction. He, uh, he sort of sighs and says, I fear I have nothing of that. Hmm. Anna, and he, tur he turns to the girl, have you seen this creature before? Anna sort of shakes her head no. Um, she, says, she says, no, no. Just me and Momo. We try to keep to ourselves mostly. Um, she and then she she sort of like giggles and says, "It's nice to have company." Um, At and that, the, I kind of like raise an eyebrow. And I all of a sudden I look around and I look back at like the girl and I look up at Momo and I look back at the girl. I'm like, "You live here by yourself?" She uh, she says, "No, I live here with Momo." And the bear, like, the bear goes, like, oh, and then, like, lays, Do lays back any, down. Do you any, any family, mother, father, siblings? She shakes her head no. Um, she says, she says, no. All I've ever had was Momo. I brought some food. I'm starving. She says, uh, she goes, she goes, oh, food. I have that. And then, like, uh, and goes into the back room. Um, she pulls out like a, like a bunch of stuff, like a like a like a, a large pot, 
and then um like three potatoes and like six leeks and she like throws all this stuff into a pot and it starts like boiling on the fire um and she puts in like a little bit of cream so she's making like like a like a nice uh potato and leek uh like creamy soup kind of thing leeks huh yeah You said something about the uh, the mountains, the Emerald Mountains, right? You're talking to Jacob again? Well, I guess I could, yeah. Yeah. He says, uh, he says, yes, the Emerald Mountains. That's where a majority of the Dragonborn come from. It's their home. It's their home capital. Yeah, that's, that's where the guys, the guys were going, going right? right? Yeah, the caravan led by uh, Horus. Never heard and, of him. He seemed like a, a, just a, a merchant, a caravan leader, but he, he did say he frequented the path between uh, Mauricium, or that, that path up between Mauricium and, uh, and the Emerald Mountains fairly frequently. He, uh, he gives an inquisitive look and says, uh, and says, a dragonborn merchant? You must be lucky to find one of those. Most of them are a bit more... Aggressive in nature, I would, I would imagine. He seemed a nice enough uh, fellow. He, he, he did have very strict rules that, uh, that I appreciated. So, so we have some idea of what the Emerald Mountains would entail. What a winter's home. I, I'm not familiar with it. He, uh, he, he says, uh, Winter's home is the farthest northern city. Well, as you know the farthest northern city in Oberon. During the winter times, it tends to get cut off, so they stockpile supplies over the warmer months. Not many people get in and out of Winter's Home, especially not when the weather is like this. And it's been getting worse. I have, I'm afraid those people may need help, but... So, we came here looking for you. What is your business in this area? He, uh, he slides forward the picture again. And says, uh, and says, this is my business. And, and but you haven't have you don't have any evidence of it as of right now. All we know. We really need more to go on than just a picture that somebody archived in an ancient vault somewhere, and you don't know where it came from. I mean, that that doesn't help us at all. I have every reason to believe that this creature exists. At first, I believe that you believe, and I even believe that the creature exists, but without something substantial to go on, some form of direction, I mean, this is a vast world, and we've already gone, you know, to the, to the east, to the mountain and killed that beast, and then we've come to the northwest, all the way up here to the frozen wastes to kill this creature, and now you want us to go over to the emerald. Seriously, you're a member of a massive church, and you guys can't find a single other group of people willing to go different directions to like hunt for information about these creatures. He uh, yeah, you guys, you guys need some new management. He uh, he, he sort of he he smiles like a like a sly smile, and he says uh, he says, I agree with you. If it were my so choice, you guys have such a hard time dealing with the three and one all the time at least they're organized if it was my choice i wouldn't be sending you on this journey but priscilla she can see more than the rest of us can and she saw something in you now whether or not i believe it half elf i must listen to her gonna pull the race card now no she she knows more than i do and tear works in mysterious ways well, I'm getting paid for this regardless, so I'm willing to go wherever we need to go. But it just seems like, I don't know, I, I just, I mean, I kind of look around the group, I feel like I we need better. I doubt it would seem prudent to alarm the populace by too many people being privy to such beasts. I'm not trying to alert the whole city or, or townships along the way, I just... But the more people who are investigating this issue, um, the more mouths will speak, the more word will spread. And the people and, and villages and folks that have already been slaughtered by these beasts aren't going to talk? I mean, come on. The, the... Dead people don't talk. Well, I understand what you're saying, 
But, I mean, you have your own crisis in your homeland that I'm sure you're wanting to get back to or at least bring help to. And, yes, of course. And, and I just want to have some form of better direction than, well, we'll go over here and maybe they might happen to have some information about what we want. I just want a more definitive direction of... I know, it's grasping at straws, but... Well, it's frustrating. I we're can understand your things, frustration. We're tracking things that haven't been tracked before. We're dealing, we're not dealing with, this isn't like some dog just ran off and we need to chase this dog. These are creatures that nobody's seen before, that we're, we're hearing rumors and, and secondhand confirmation. And how and many dealing, cases are left to tell the tale? We're, we're dealing with something much greater than these simple creatures. These creatures don't have don't seem to have their own will or ideals or or any sort of rhythm to, to, to what they're doing. There's no pattern that I know of. It, it seems like something else is controlling these things or creating them. And exactly. I'm sure whatever is doing that doesn't want us to find them. And that's part of why these things are so hard to track down. For all we know, this could just be something to delay us. Perhaps there's something else greater happening, but... In, until we get to the bottom of this, until we find these creatures, we, we don't have any further to go. Well, what about you, Vincent? Oh, when you second, summon guys. the creature... I think he's coming. Yeah, I think he's coming back. He dropped down like a while ago, but it's okay. Yeah. What about you, Vincent? Like, when you summon or try to summon that creature or whatever, pull it out of the ring, does it act like it has any intelligence? Can, can you... I mean, is, are there more of its kind? Is there a way to, like, you can you can make creatures understand you, right? Like that that moose creature we just killed in the cave. Jada was able to to command it. So can you command the beast or make it understand and like ask it to lead you to its other creatures like it or something or take it take us to its master? I mean, I don't I don't know if you have any of this you know type of interaction with the beast when you summon it but is there anything you could find out um also out of out, out of character you you remember you talked to it right i know that i'm not yeah can we get okay. an insight on that okay. <laughs> okay for the rest of the viewers i did that in private like last episode like i went out in private and i talked to it but i'm not gonna tell the rest of the group i'm just gonna go ahead and <laughs> okay We'll, we'll find out if you want. Well, Kentharian and I were spying on him. Yeah. So it wasn't entirely private. But he doesn't know that we know. It's kind of it's kind of hard to role play that direction. We haven't Grisham, shared that who doesn't know about it, but putting the pieces together from other things that he's done to other creatures, I mean, it still makes sense that that would be a valid so, question. So after, after he says, let's find out, I'll, I'll just give him a look and then kind of glance back at Shadow and look at Vincent again and just say, we've already found out some things, haven't we? I can just assume that they're more like it, yeah. And it seems pretty intelligent by the way that I can, you know, somewhat command it around. I just shake my head well, and I say... Let's not in the girl's house when you yeah, say yeah. that. If you guys want to follow me, we can... I'm not going out in the blizzard. We can, we can wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Jacob, Jacob, sort of, Jacob sort of laughs and says, as much as, I, as much as I see Grisham as a stick in the mud at times, I believe he might be making the best suggestion. Perhaps we could save this for tomorrow. All right. I know I need rest. Hey, Ren, you got any food? Uh, right as you say that, uh, she has finished the uh, like the sort of uh, the the pot of of stew that she was making, and she brings it over uh, and like places it on the table, so you each can you each can eat uh, some potato and leek soup with a little bit of cream. Um, it's delicious. I just had it for dinner like three days ago. Um, so uh, we got all to get to sit around the table and have a nice family dinner. Um, Jacob looks up and he says, he says, I fear for this journey and I fear for our people. 
and I fear for Oberon. But I do thank Tyr every day that you lot are alive. And although I wish I could send more than just you, I believe that Priscilla sees something in you and knows that you will do great things. I pray that you can do great things. He looks at Grisham and says, I apologize. I'm sorry that there's not more that I can do. That there's not more that I have to go on. Corpses are not the easiest thing to track. Well, Jacob, I don't blame you personally. I, I didn't mean to come across that way. It's just your organization, uh, your church seems like it could be slightly better managed at times, that's all. He, uh, he nods. That's fine, so... You know, whatever, do it your way. He nods in agreement and says, uh, well, perhaps next time. Perhaps next time. We'll see if your guild can help. And he gives you sort of a smile. I don't know if oh, you have revealed bad. that you're in the 3M1, but, like, he probably knows. Like, he, he's got, he's got a, he's got a finger on, 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 on your pulse right now. Well, well I, don't I don't think, think anybody in the parties, party. um, you know, Attempted to like make that uh, connection. No, I don't. No one has. I'm like, I know you're. You you have connection to bad dudes. That's it. That's all I got. Wait, wait. I'll um. After Grisham finishes, I'll, I look over and I just say, the church is spread very thin these days. The the last few decades or so, with the Arrival of the Order, it's gotten a little tricky, and I just kind of look at Jacob and shrug. We aren't, we aren't quite as respected or as in power as we once were. We are still a, a force for good and, and a, a presence, but we don't quite have the numbers that we used to. Jacob uh, finishes the soup and sort of like slides it in front of him and he says uh, he says well I believe tomorrow morning we can discuss our strategy and we can decide how to move forward actually we have to get moving back to my wagon before we move forward he says yes 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 I forgot about the wagon of course we will get back your Wagon. No one addressed uh, Grisham hallucinations. No one even cared. <laughs> Are you saying that in character or like? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just mention. I don't. I don't Why you've never hallucinated before? No. <laughs> well, you want a party? Wait, he's, he's actually he's hallucinating, hallucinating right now. He could be. Not right this minute. I heard I, I was gonna I was gonna take a little of my medicine though. Okay. At the, at the end of the night, you know, just to wind down. Yeah. So Jim, there's not been any good real role play opportunities in the story lately to like bring that in, so I haven't really had That's a been a good story opportunity for me to just do drugs. It's it's fun it's fun to see what happens. Yeah, you're like no, yeah, it's you're in your tent awesome. by yourself. You're in a tent, right? Wait, remove from the party. I just want to shoot <laughs> balls girls. on the top There's of the no mountain right now. No In the middle of a blizzard. Well, I was I was actually going to bring that up after we had started combat. I thought of that. I was like, oh, yeah, I should totally be, like, completely out of my mind right now. <laughs> but um, but, but we had already, like, kind of got into it, and there had been already a few few rounds passed, and I was like, ah, uh, it's a little late. I, you get blind and deaf, and you're like, man, these drugs are kicking in hard. <laughs> So I, I look at Jacob, I'm like, what leads you to believe that this beast is here in Winter's Home? He, uh, he says, um, some would call it a gut feeling. I've heard rumors of the people here disappearing as well. So everything that I can see all leads back to that. I could be wrong. It could be bandits, it could be uh, 
a rogue element of Mansa's army. It could be anything. But something tells me that that beast is here. And if it is, I'm going to find it. And when I do, I'm going to kill it. So you're you're just going on gut feeling like there's like what? Give me a reason to believe that that creature is not here. Where did this sheet of paper come from? Was it just laid upon your doorstep and you're like, oh, I he, must go find this foul creature. He puts his hand, his head in his hands and says and like like mumbles to himself like this elf doesn't listen to anything. Um. <laughs> the the drawings were made by Dragonborn archivists. Within the past ten years, ten these drawings years? were made. I thought this thing would be like ten days ago. You've been traveling on the you've been traveling on the road for like way past ten days. This thing could have like this thing could have like ten weeks ago. This thing could have like spawned children, you know, gone off, written about its life die had its children go off and do great things he says uh he says what you are describing it could have just been a young child drawing pictures what you are describing is a nightmare if this thing could do what we have seen those creatures do and that had children i fear for the future of oberon and for the future of my people and your family and all of our families well, time out. Jacob, Jacob was, was there, there whenever we fought that, that, that liquid, liquid beast thing, thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. The giant ink thing. Yeah. Okay. He knows that these things exist. Like, he's seen at least one. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. And he's heard of the one that you guys went and found. So when you guys went to find that, he was sent to find this one. Yeah, yeah. okay. Thanks. While you were gone. He has not found it yet. You chose to go with him to find this one versus going down south to help the people at, in Mesomercatus or going to the west to work on the war. Well, at this point, I think we're all a little on edge. I know Grisham misses his cart. I know Venator is frustrated. He hasn't had any horse jerky in a while. You're just mad because I didn't let you ride on the cart. Let's talk about that. I'll, I'll let you ride on the cart on the way back, Kander. And you can even put your heavy shield in there and your armor. You know, you can take a little, you know, kick back, put your feet up. You'll have to tell me the story tomorrow of how you got that. It is a fine card. I'll give you that. He, uh, yeah. J Jacob says, as much as I would love to continue this conversation about the cart, I fear I grow weary and I will go to bed. You don't get to ride in the cart, Jacob. He, uh, <laughs> as, he, as he walks towards his bed, he turns back and he says, I pray I don't have to ride in that cart. He lays his head down, falls asleep. Anna also goes off to bed, leaving. I'm gonna have a second bowl of stew. Okay, go ahead. And then, and then I'm gonna go to bed. Anything else that anybody wants to do? I'm gonna approach Momo and attempt to pet him. Make an animal handling roll for me, please. And he loses a hand. Let him smell my hand. the one arm. Hey, 21. That's not, actually, that's not that bad. Um, as you reach your hand forward, the, the, the bear looks cautious. But as you get closer and touch it, the bear feels like, uh, feels like it, it's not that bad. His hair is it's very thick to the point where like you almost can't push in far enough to get to to get to like the, the skin bit that's underneath the hair. Um, 
When you touch him, you gather the feeling that nothing out there could possibly make this bear cold. This thing is like, you know, fucking locked and loaded, probably grew up its entire life in this environment. Um, and although he's huge and, like, scary looking, there's something about him that makes you feel like like he's kind of friendly. Like there's some there's, there's something there that that has uh, that has him having some sort of connection to to people. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put my bedroll by the fire beside the bear. If the okay. bear doesn't mind me here. The bear does not mind you there. I'm going to sit by the hearth and meditate. Vincent? Meditate as well. Okay. And Cantharion? I'm going to, um, I want to finish, I got the blade free, like the long sword. I want to finish like oiling it up before I go to bed. And then I'll just kind of like, um, like throw down a bedroll, like kind of by the door. So I can be kind of close to the exit. Okay. But, um, before I want to talk to Vincent before we go to bed, like okay. things are kind of winding down, and just ask him. So this creature, I I saw I saw the conversation you had, and I know it's seeking it's seeking its companions, it's seeking its other creatures. Somehow, I don't, I don't quite understand the connection. Do you have you thought on this at all? Yeah, I, I feel as though its companions are in trouble, so I wouldn't assume that they're in any way linked by like friendly terms. Like you know, not like all bad things. What Out of character, you? what was it that I actually told you last time? <laughs> that, uh, that, well, the creature said to me that it hopes that we find him. It's like, I hope that you do, like, almost like, I need you to do this, because, like, save my people kind of deal. Kind of yeah, it implied like they were family, like they were... I wrote down... His others. Hopes, hope we find its brothers. So the creature hopes we find its brothers and sisters soon. And then it said, I have placed a lot of faith in you. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Okay. But yeah, I, I don't I don't think that this these things we're fighting are friends with the thing that fights for us. What concerns me though is the wake of destruction these creatures are leaving. We know that they can be controlled to a degree but we don't really quite understand to what extent yet. And I just want to make sure that our purposes are aligned, that we're seeking to ultimately stop these creatures, in that the whatever is directing these things behind the scenes doesn't have the best interests of the realm in mind. Vincent... And I get, I, I get real close to him at this point. I say, Vincent, if it came down to it, if the only way that we knew to stop this creature was to destroy it, would you be able to do that? Well, let's just hope it doesn't come down to that. <laughs> can, I, can I hear this conversation? Um, can you hear while you're meditating? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. In our world, when elves meditate, can can they hear what's going on around them? Let's see. Y'all continue your conversation while this up. Okay. <laughs> oh, right. Of, of course I agree with you. I don't wish it to come to that either. But I need to know that we're on the same page, that if it comes down to it, if it comes down to destroying these creatures or destroying one of these creatures to save lives that you're willing to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. they came down to saving lives, yeah. 
All right, I just pat him on the shoulder and I say, the power that you wield is great, with or without that creature. If it gets to the point where that creature starts to take over, let me know, and we'll get through this together. All right, it's a deal. Um, it looks like it says elves don't need to sleep. Instead, they meditate deeply, remaining semi-conscious for four hours in a day. While meditating, you can dream after fashion. Such dreams are actually mental exercises that have become reflexive, or reflexive through years of practice. So can you hear? Uh, it says semi-conscious. I don't know. All right. Should, make like, should, I, should I do like a perception check? Yeah, do a perception check. Let's see how well you roll. I imagine you probably pretty much used You heard it. Like a normal sleeping character. Okay. Yeah, I think you heard it. Okay. And with that, I pat him on the shoulder and head to bed. So the half elves meditate instead of sleep also? Mm, I think half elves probably sleep. They half sleep. <laughs> they half sleep. They sleep badly. Yeah. <laughs> they sleep with one eye open. Yeah. All, all half elves have restless leg syndrome. Um. Okay, so you've all gone to bed? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The as you sleep, you hear the winds of of the blizzard attacking the sides of the house, but you feel safe. the The structure is nice; it's warm in here, and you feel that for the first time in quite some time, you're not sleeping on the road. You're sleeping somewhere where you feel comfortable and you feel safe. You have a full night's rest and the next morning the blizzard appears to have subsided you wake to find that jacob momo and anna are all not there um inside of the house um this is the next morning and you've you've all just woken up and and none of them appear to be inside the house First, uh, looks like half elves do sleep a full eight hours. Okay. And second, it looks like my meditation only lasts four hours. So would I have been awake to see where they may have gone or what may have happened to them? Mm, I'm going to go with no just for story reasons. Okay. Yeah. I was in deep meditation. Yeah. <laughs> deep. You could not get deeper. So, did they leave out any food for us or are we supposed to just help ourselves to breakfast? Um, that's, that's your call. Did they leave in a hurry? They're just not here. They don't appear to have left in a hurry. Oh, okay. I mean, I'll step out, I'll step outside and see if they're, like, outside the immediate area. You're stepping outside? Yeah, you know, just, like, poke my, open up the door, kind of step out onto, the, like, the, uh, the threshold and kind of check this, you know, look around the yard. Not I'm not actually going to, like, leave the house, but... As you check outside, you notice that there is an elf standing out front. He looks at you, and he says, Come out. It's best if you do it quickly. Do I recognize this elf at all? You don't. He wasn't at the meetings? He wasn't at the meetings. Do your secret elf handshake at him. Um, I hadn't developed that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggle your pointy ears at him. All right. Do you listen? Do you, do you comply? Uh, I stare at him and I look. And I say, do you want all of us? He says, yes. All five of you. Are you with anyone? He says, yes. I am with a lot of people. And who are these people? He says, by order of... 
By order of Zorverix the Forgotten, I am here to take you into custody and bring you to Moral Temor. On what grounds? What are we being charged? Murder. Of? That is of none of your concern. I believe it is my concern. Apparently we took someone's <laughs> life. <laughs> He uh, not allowed he to be told who you murdered. He says, uh, he says, you can come out here peacefully, or we will drag you out by your heels. I will come out in peace, but I want to know what it is we are getting ourselves into. He says, <laughs> I'm trying to, a whole lot of trouble if you don't walk out of the damn cabin. Do I, when I look beyond him, do I see any, any further evidence of, of Numbers? Nope. Ranks? Nope. None. I kind of like I'm standing in the threshold, and I kind of, you know, lean back into the cabin. I say, uh, boys and girl, it appears we might have a problem. What sort of problem? Well, Do you see Jacob? No. There's an elf who claims we are being tried for murder. And says we need to come out peacefully, or else we will be, quote, dragged out by our heels. I finish my morning stretches, and then uh, start suiting up. This might take a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Was it like like ten minutes or something to don plate armor? Uh... Venator, is there any sign of Momo and the girl? Uh, nope, only this elf. Well, it's certainly not the first time I've been accused of murder, nor the whole group for that matter. So you're saying one elf is trying to drag five of us away? Well, you you know, he he claims that he has ways. Well, did you ask him who's charging us with murder? Uh, some long complicated name I've never heard before in my life. Zorverix the us. Forgotten. Some for, <laughs> yeah. some forgotten dude who appears to have forgotten who we have murdered and what we're being Is tried for. The forgotten or the forgetful? A uh, little column A, a little column B. He, uh, he, he shouts oh, back he's... and he says, he says, you have two minutes, elf. I guess we hear that. Yes. What do we do? Dance. Maybe a little, maybe a little quicker with the Maybe straps. help me. Yeah, that back piece is a little tricky if you get to Yeah, I'll, I'll go help Kent there and speed up the process. Go really you can't only help him with his belt. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I can't really lift it up. Just the lower back. Yeah, that, that one. Yeah. You see that loop? There's a loop back there. I just oh, uh-huh. it's hard to stretch it. I, uh, I look over at the elf and I'm like, so this forgotten, uh, are you... A group of elves? Are you with some kind of church? Are you in the order? He uh, he says, I will answer your questions, but only after your company complies. Are you with one of these warring uh, cities? He uh, he shakes his head and says. Uh, Moral Temor does not worry themselves over the needs of Oberon. And how long have you been tracking us? I mean, we are quite far north uh, of any other civilization. Where, where are you? Where are you coming from? Since you left the Dragonborn caravan. Well, I mean, okay, so you've been following us since we picked up the caravan, then? Since you got off it. I guess is what I was trying to say. Since we got off it, what, there's nothing that I know of in these areas. Does it have something to do with the girl? The dress thing a long time ago? No. That... <laughs> Does it have something to do with Are you that? actually asking Are you, Yeah, you're no, asking no, 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 no. Like, I can't remember if that what was like... What do you do with the girl in her dress? Well, I mean, I... I, I, I oh, asked that's before I met you guys. Dress. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's... Don't, don't worry about that. That only started a war. This is totally separate. Well, I asked him if he had any ties. With oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Never mind. I'm an idiot. All right, so I think I think we're about done. 
with my gear. Can I use like, I guess, detect magic to see if I, see if he has any innate magical abilities? He does not. Okay. And then what kind of, how is he, how is he, how does he look? Like what is he armored in and what kind of weapons does he have? Uh, it's, it's somewhat ornate in that it's probably like, like some sort of high ranking, like officer. Okay. And he has a bow and two swords. Do I notice any sigils or markings of any kind that might distinguish? There are sigils. And you do recognize one of them as being of an elven, uh, like, uh, of, of elven nature. You know, like, you could look at the, you could look at the thing and go, it probably looks like, like, it's elvish. It's like, it's like a, it's like a withered tree. Okay. Do I, do I know of where that, like, where that tribe hails from? at all i don't know would you have known of moral temor before if if i told um, you out of character that it's an all elven city or an all elven, elven outpost would you know of it um would I venator like I... know of it should he roll for history or lore or something yeah i mean like i guess it depends on what their alignment is like if i was a part of that group that was off murdering magic users these would... they would not be aligned with them they're more okay. unaligned like true neutral like they don't align true. themselves with anybody else in in oberon okay so because i'm just trying to think like if we were a part of that group murdering elves or murdering excuse me if we were part of elves murdering magic users you know would we have had dealings with that particular probably faction? not probably not moral temor no okay so at this point, I've finished, you know, with everyone's help, putting all my armor on, and... Yeah, I guess, can I make, like, um... I guess, can I make a history check to try and see if I if I can ask sure. any more information? Sure. Eleven? You've just heard of it. Okay. You have not experienced it in detail that you would be able to say a whole lot other than you know that the, it's it's an elven outpost that happens to probably be be made up of like snow elves and I, i'll just kind of sigh and shake my head and i say it's another typical start to the day isn't it head head outside to talk to this elf i look at camp and i'm like nothing with you is typical does everyone walk outside, or just the two of you? I mean, I I guess I step I out. I step outside as well. I'm gonna peek out the window. Okay, and Grisham. Grisham. Want to stealth? Sneak out the door with everybody else, or maybe through a window. Whatever is most stealthy and convenient. <laughs> In the snow, okay. out the only exit. <laughs> um. As you all step outside of the cabin, you see. Uh, I don't think I'll get. Uh, Vincent stepped out. I don't think I'm you watching. Know. No. But I'll so, stay. so as the as the three of you stepped out of the cabin, you see first scout Alibrin of Moral Temor. As you step out, you also happen to look at your surroundings and see that you are surrounded by about twenty elves, four of which are on the roof of the cabin, and the rest of which have the cabin circled. You did not see them when you first opened the door. When you first opened the door, all you saw was the scout. Um, he looks at you and he nods, and he says, uh, "He says, now if you would kindly bring the rest of your party, and don't think the half elf is going to get away with it." It's impressive. And uh, we I are actually back into the cabin, and kind of motion at the at the magic man. Yeah, I'm coming out now. So you have four in the front, and and Grisham, who thinks that he is stealthed inside the cabin. Well, didn't he just like call me out on it, or what? He d he did call you out on it. So I'm not like looking like an idiot anymore, because he's like, <laughs> I see you, and I'm like, oh, okay, busted. 
So, as the five of you exit the cabin, you see all of the people surrounding it. And uh, the first scout looks at you and he says, uh, he says, By order of the Forgotten, you have a meeting with our king. And uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. Um, it's probably the best stopping place that I could find. I planned out way ahead of that, but it's gotten super late. And uh, I don't want to go. Planning. I don't want to go too late. Oh, what's up, Flamey Adams? Thank you so much for the follow. We truly appreciate it. Um, so that is gonna do it for episode twelve. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do experience. Uh, the thing that you fought was awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys each. Let's do. I liked the role play today. So let's do. Let's do 8,500 experience each. Jesus. No, oh, no, 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 never mind. I gotta divide that. I gotta divide that. I was about to be like, damn, we like, just leveled. Yeah, it's like two levels. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't mean to do that. That's, I did the math wrong. <laughs> Sorry. 2,500 experience each. Um, and were there any bonds tonight that were that were resolved uh i just wanted to get closer to the ring but i mean we didn't get to summon it or anything so nah, not yet not yet um i just overheard the conversation between chris and or i should say cantharion and uh vincent and so i uh, am now kind of my interest in uh the magical abilities and, and the ring and this entity had been deep. Okay, so that's a new one. There you go. Yeah, add that on there. Anybody else? I don't think I've had any differences. Okie dokie. Well, in that I case... I with Momo. <laughs> there you go. You got a bomb with Momo. We'll give you a bomb with Momo. Um, we, in that case, we're going to go ahead and end it there. Um, I want to go ahead and thank everybody who came by, everyone who donated, everyone who who came the, by to give us a follow. The our Ooh. last donor wanted uh, you to check out the message. Yeah. Wanted me to check out the message. It was as we were entering the house. Okay. We were supposed to read this. Let me see here. What is that? What was that message? Where do I go for it? It's Twitch alerts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You use that one. Yeah. Twitch alerts. Let's go ahead and hop in here and see what the message was. Let me get over it. How do I get that? Let me full Just screen this. Um, the last donations that we had was they were both from BM Player, who donated thirty-five dollars tonight, which is awesome. He said, "Here's hoping for one and wagon explosions," and he said, "Suddenly a Tarask emerges from the basement. Roll initiative." <laughs> Thank you so what much, guys. Thank you so much for everyone who showed up, for who gave us a donation, for who followed tonight. Please be sure to tell your friends if you've missed any of the other episodes. You can check them all out at my YouTube channel, which is found below. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter because I tell everybody whenever we're going live. Uh, we tend to stream on Tuesdays and hopefully sometimes on Saturdays. Um, hopefully put something together next week and also have something whenever I am in North Carolina for the holidays. Maybe put together like a world building thing. Um, until then, uh, my name is Captain Rob. You can find me right here on our Twitch channel or anywhere else below. I'm an aspiring voice actor and film actor out here in Los Angeles. To the right of me, we have Chris. Chris, where can everybody find you? I'm at Cantherion on the Twitsters and things. I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, <laughs> another awesome session by Rob and friends. You guys are all awesome. I just, I love, it was, I feel like every time we get into a, a good groove like this, we play a couple in a row. It's like the, the role playing and the magic comes together really well. So awesome stuff. And hopefully we can get together again soon. Sweet. Uh, underneath Cantherion or underneath Chris, we have my buddy Landon. Landon, where can everybody find you? Um, I'm a mod in the stream, so you can just click on there, and all the info is laid out on my Twitch channel. So, 
Very cool. Underneath Landon, we have Jillian. Jillian, where can everybody find you? I'm on Patreon um, under Jillian Ivy. I'm doing art right now. I have some free printable downloads that people can go get for like holiday cards to print out and give to their friends, um, family for Christmas. Sweet. Or whatever you celebrate. Free um, family the, cards. The link um, in the chat. To the left of Jillian, we have our good buddy Kevin. Kevin, where can everybody find you? Um, I've got a DeviantArt page uh, under uh, it's Rainson DeviantArt, um, and then I also moonlight and Jillian's art stream sometimes. Uh, and then you can find me here, and that's about it. I don't really do the social media, so here's and last, where be. last but most certainly not least, we have my best friend forever, Joe, who's found directly beneath me. Joe, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash joecoveredmountain. I stream Magic the Gathering Monday through Fridays. Um... And then here playing Dungeons and Dragons with all these beautiful people. Also, Twitter at Joe Covered MTN, tweeting out magic stuff, Dungeons and Dragons stuff, Twitch stuff. Always Sweet. tweet out whenever we're going live what we'll be doing and what times. So, so yeah. thank you guys so much again for joining us. We hope that you guys had a fantastic session because I know I had a fantastic session. So, here's to seeing you guys next week. Be sure to tell your friends and your family. And. As always, happy hunting. Let me go ahead and shut this 